Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back to Full Starts Podcast, the podcast that talks about all those failed movie franchises that tried to start something and failed at the first hurdle. Neither of us interrupted him. Mm. That's nice. First That's... time ever. <laughs> Lovely. I've... With me as always. Already, we're off to a shit start, aren't we? Because yeah. neither of us jumped on there. Yeah, should we, uh, should we go again? Let's try no, again. No, yeah, we're yeah. not going again. With me as always is Lewis. Hello. And Ash. That is me. Lewis, what's your favourite toe? My favourite toe. Toe. Uh, middle on the left foot. Lovely. Ash, what's your favourite toe? Step toe and his son. Nice. Yeah. Mine's a little toe on my left foot because I broke it once. Okay, let's roll the music. <laughs> That doesn't sound like you like it, then. It sounds like you hate it. Welcome back, guys. Hello. Been well since last month. No. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Go on. Yeah, I had a tragedy in my family. Oh, can, hold Are on. We... Hold on, guys. You're going to do some bad improv. Uh, okay. They found out I was born. Oh, there it was. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well. You know what? <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm used to that. I'm used to you having to be around in my life. Yeah, like a growth. Yeah. So, the winner of the poll. Ooh, oh, sequel pitch. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Go, Lewis, go. Now, you see, I'm tw- Twitter has me confused. Oh, well, yes. Oh, Because I? I, I have two accounts. I have yeah. the, the Full Starts podcast account, and I have the, the Ty's Beanie Baby account. You accounts. click on the little yes, image. You well, you, you tap the image, and then you go into Full Starts. Yes, motherfucker. Thank <laughs> you very much. I know exactly how it works. But... Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were confused. <laughs> but it's, Is this my confused face? Depending on which account I'm on, yeah. I have... Two different results. Well, I saw the last poll from our official one. Okay. And I saw who won it. Oh, I mean, Ashley won it either way. Oh, good. I know. It, to, to be fair, like, it was the, the better pitch. It was the only one that had a prop. and it was the only I'm... one that had a lemon box filled with spunk. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> that is very true. Although, shout out to whoever it was who gave me at least one vote. I have. I think I got one vote out of that. You oh. did, you did. Let me. T- I'll give you. I'll, let me give you the breakdowns. Break me down. So then. lemon two electric boogaloo. Mm-hmm. I think that's the reason he won because he broke out his electric boogaloo colours. Mm. Maybe got fifty seven percent. Keith lemon two the end. It was me, twenty nine. Keith lemon whatever the fuck, which was just Keith lemon getting his head kicked in for ninety <laughs> minutes. Yeah, fourteen percent Dan. So well done. Well done you. I, mean, I, I kind of want to get behind that one. <laughs> Because I, I had a whatever the fuck for Step Brothers and what, was it you was it you put me that gave me that fourteen percent because I'll take fourteen percent of a vote. Well, no, I'm not going to actually vote for you. I'll, I'll say nice stuff to your face, but I'm never going to vote for you. Yeah, that that sounds about right. <laughs> There's <laughs> your winners, guys. It's Ashley. Uh, oh, well, I haven't won in ages. Thank you. Congratulations for your win. Now, the most recent movie they got released that we went to go see was Ghost, Ghost Stories. Stories. Yay. But no, I'm I'm so sorry, listeners. We we didn't see go go see ghost stories in the end because uh, Lewis, do you want do you want to tell us why we didn't see ghost stories? Yes, please. Cinema, do. Are, multiplexes are a fucking dreadful place. What, I've what nev- they do? I've never had a good movie going experience at a fucking multiplex. <laughs> what? And where else do you go to watch movies apart from an independent all the time cinema or a small chain? Okay, I retract my statement. So we 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 went to see ghost stories. We went for the nine o'clock showing because it was yeah. the only one we could get to we roll up and we, we we're told we can't go in because of a screen malfunction if you can hear the air quotes if you can hear his indignation mm. now i mean obviously the cinema not naming names but they they rhyme with blinny blinny blood <laughs> well you get oh, three no, blinnies no idea what cinema <laughs> that is thank you <laughs> not naming names there you go they they obviously don't know that I've worked for a cinema before. I know what a screen malfunction is when it's nearing the end of the night. It means you've cleaned the screen. No one has bought tickets in advance. It's nine o'clock. The movie was meant to start. You're just not showing it. You've, you So fuck you. Yep. So, so we went to see A Quiet Place instead. Mm-hmm. And there would be more cinema ranting throughout the, throughout <laughs> the episode. We, we went there to, to get our spoop on. And so we decided to keep on that theme. And get our spoop on. Yes. True. Too spoopy for me. Do you have a coupon spoop on? Spoop on coupon. <laughs> no, wait, wait. Three spoopy five me, because that's one more. Wow. I love that five ever. <laughs> uh, Any more memes? Jokes. Yeah. Old jokes. <laughs> I mean, so, sp- spoilers for later on. I fucking love this movie. Yes. I fucking love The Quiet Place. But I am still furious 
that I didn't get to see, see ghost stories. Yeah, yeah. I told you go sit in your lunch break, and you moaned about that. I tried. I I went to two different cinemas on my <laughs> lunch break, looking to see if they were showing it, and neither of them were until like quarter past five. You could have had a break till quarter past five I had to get here, motherfucker, <laughs> to record Fine. this. Fine, I guess. Not like we could have done it with an outro or anything. I guess see it tomorrow now. <laughs> so, a yep. quiet place. A quiet place. From Wouldn't the people we... who brought you the Texas Chainsaw, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street remakes. Platinum Dunes. <laughs> I know. The same I... people who are bringing you a Dora the Explorer live action movie next year. I couldn't believe when I saw Silver Dunes. Like, fuck off. Silver Dunes? Platinum really? Dunes. Platinum Dunes. Come Whatever. on, they're better than silver. I couldn't believe uh... when I saw Emerald Dunes. <laughs> Mate, Golden they, Dunes. Mate, they deserve a silver at best. Ah, oh, mate, that bronze plate, bronze plated gold, silver, platinum dunes, whatever the fuck they are. Yeah, well, I mean, now you're just being silly. I am. You're very silly. Why are you doing that? What did you think of it, Ash? Lewis already told us he loves it. Yeah, um, I can really appreciate the thought and effort that went into that film, but it's not for me. I liked it, but I there were. Mm, it was very jump scary. It felt like the whole well, you thing. Know what? I don't like you now. It felt like the whole thing was contrived just to set up jump scares. Um, well, to be fair, if the entire conceit of your movie is that you have to be quiet, any scare is going to be a jump scare. It's very it doesn't true. have to be. Kind of does. I mean, they're not silent hunters. No, no, they're not. But you can be scared when you're. Uh, let's say strapped to a table and some bloke's coming at you with a chainsaw that doesn't need to be a jump scare because you can see him coming at you from two miles away but you're not being silent chainsaws revving you're probably screaming yeah I mean, if, he, if he's coming at you with a chainsaw turned off that's kind of no, weird no no no, no, going, no, no. With, the, with a turned off chainsaw no, if he's, the, if he's the an film... underwater squid man going <laughs> <laughs> the, the film wasn't not silent work either though. way because he's underwater the film wasn't silent because no it wasn't silent it was a it's a, is it well, a quiet place? It's a but, quiet movie. It's not a silent But they movie. used every out... Well, the majority, of, place. majority of their noise outbursts were used as a jump. You could They could have been ambushed in the waterfall without the noisy jump scare. They couldn't have been ambushed in the waterfall. What, they set that up as to why they're not going to come here. Do it's, they not drink? Do they not need to drink? We weren't told that. We weren't told bloody anything about them. Which I loved. Good. Why do, I need, why do you need to be told? Ah. Because we... The world didn't feel real. The world felt what? incredibly real. The world real. didn't feel real at all there because was there was so much, like not, so many little details in the production design. In, in the tiny, in that tiny little place where they have to eat off a cloth with their hands, mm-hmm. so it's not cutlery uh-huh. and and plates and stuff. Um, they have to play Monopoly with felt pieces. It's a lovely touch. It yeah. was. The that dice was great. literally placing the dice down so it doesn't roll and make noise. Yeah, like so many evocative images like that in this movie. I love that, and I, that's how that's why I'm saying I really appreciate what this film has done. But I, I also like how they show us the year that is 2020, and that we weren't just given a big heading at the beginning of the film. 2020. It was yeah. just later on. It starts at 89 days. You don't know 89 days from what. Um. So it's just, yeah, you are in 2020. Something has happened that has caused these beings to hunt everything by sound. Yep. And they are the apex predator of the land, as far as we know. As far uh, as we can tell, yeah. Uh, because we don't know anything else. We mm. we don't know how any anywhere has gone to combat them so far. We don't know how those efforts went. We don't know. We, we don't, don't know they're indestructible until the last act of the film. We don't need to know any of that. If we, if we, we need to be scared of them. The right? movie so is, tell us who they are. The movie is better because it narrows its focus on this family and their story. If it, if it broadens the spotlight, if it open, if it brings up the house lights and shows you everything else, the battles them arriving. No, no, it's it just doesn't need to be that. Day or World War Z. It doesn't need to be that. It, oh, don't, it don't, can be from the newspaper Zed, clippings. Sorry, I'm English. No, don't don't bring that shit into my house. But it it would be World War, but fuck that. Film. It could be all the newspaper clippings they had. It could have been there. It could have been written on the there. whiteboard. Yes, there were parts of it like they are indestructible. It, it gives you no history of them. It just says this is what they because are. They, to okay, a point. So because this I one family, they're not a family of scientists. They don't fucking know. So, so while, while Doctor Major Scientist. I, I also really like this movie. 
Uh, I Dan, really enjoyed the concept. Yeah. Can we exclude Ashley from the conversation? I mean, I respect his opinion, but he's wrong. <laughs> no, we can't exclude him. And I liked the film. I'm just pointing out my problems with it. <laughs> uh, I I liked the pacing. Um, I do agree that it is a little jump scary. But then again, when it's a movie about making noise and making a single noise is a problem, I understand that, you know, it's kind of, you can't do very many of turning a corner and one's just standing there when they're only going to come and attack you when there's noise. So I, I'm fine with, I'm kind of fine with the jump scary. Like why it didn't work in it and why it kind of works here for me is because, you know, he's meant to be this creepy serial killer clown and there's not much creepy to him he's all just rushing at you rather than he's just sort of you'd see shot like you could see a sh- like if you had a shot of him like walking behind one of the the kids or something and then just walking off so hmm. and they had no idea was there stuff like that you know a, a which was that was good would have been fine um but it was always kind of um presented with that musical sting even if it is just oh they're just standing behind they're not even looking at them they're just going to walk on by even that was presented as a booger booger yes it was um We've we've done it, guys. We did it. Yeah. Back in back in another episode. Listeners, go back and find our it episode to hear our thoughts on it. What? It. What? The it. Who? Stephen King's it. Ah, Steph jokes. King's it. Jokes. Anyway, uh, tag. So he's it. I was fine with the pacing. I was happy with it focusing on just the family because I've seen plenty of movies where you get to see how society deals with it and how it breaks down and blah. Mm-hmm. I've I've seen plenty of that, so I'm more interested in seeing a. It from a family's perspective. Well, I like that too. I like again. I like the fact that it started eighty six days on, so we didn't witness the outbreak. Mm. I would have just liked to know more about it. Well, I, I t- um, okay, one of the things I liked. Okay, so I guess we should. Should we jump? to just go into jump spoiler to spoilers. territory? I think jump to spoilers territory. So, if you want to avoid spoilers, skip ahead to the point I'm about to say now. These numbers here: forty four, forty eight. Uh, so I want uh, a small. There's a lot of like small world building that they don't drag. They don't drag on in this film. Yes. So a lot of stuff like like we said before, like playing uh, Monopoly with felt pieces and the sand, the whiteboard, the, the sand, newspapers. Having the... one of my favorite little things is like the painted on the floorboards where to step so yes. you don't make the a sound. The lights, the, sur- like the surrounding fires in the farms. It's yep. All that stuff. One of my favourite ones right you near the beginning. You infer the world instead of being told it. And one of my favourite things right near the beginning is when they're first in the shop and you see outside a big billboard of like missing posters mm-hmm. and it's clearly piled up. So clearly mm-hmm. this was going on like for a while before it got to this point. But it's just a nice bit of subtlety of there's just layers and layers of all these missing posters of people have just disappeared. And then it's like, oh, shit, now, you know, we're in a time where we know exactly why they've disappeared. Speaking of them being in the pharmacy yeah. at the start, I have a question for you, Dan. Yes. Listeners, da- Dan's very favourite thing in the world is thro- <laughs> oh, throwing rude hand gestures at a movie screen. Y- uh, yes. <laughs> I loves it. A lot. He fucking loves throwing up middle fingers at movie screens. Dan, yeah. you called the four-year-old a wanker. Why? <laughs> Because he is and was. He's okay. four years old. Okay. Look, I, so got, I should, I should this, is only, this is only the start of month on. three. He's four years old. This hasn't been his entire life. No, but this is an apocalypse. You grow up or you die. No, he's four. That's it. And then later it's on... It's only been three months. He clearly doesn't know why they need to be quiet. Because yes, no, they do. No, he doesn't know why they need to be, be quiet. Be quiet or knew, die. If he knew why they needed to be quiet, then he would have been fucking terrified that his rocket was making sound. He clearly hasn't been told that, oh shit, there's monsters in the wood that will kill you. Then they're fucking wrong, the parents. Yes, they were wrong, and they've learned from that wrongness. <laughs> and it's 400 oh, so days later that's, their, that's the world building is it like 400 we... days later, they've had, they've had a dead kid and they are paranoid as to fucking buggery. Okay. We're they, swearing in ooh, this episode, by the way. Su- no, they're super paranoid. The minute that rocket goes off, the, they give him up for dead. I mean, the dad runs Krasinski after him. Krasinski runs after him as fast as he can. Yeah, but ev- they know he's dead. You can see it. They know he's a goner. Yeah, they know. But I know, and that's, it's, it's a great scene. So why haven't they told him, make a noise, or you die? Because he's this is why we're walking around and it's a barefoot. Mistake on their part to have not told him that in this world. Of course, yes. they would have told him. They sh- they did tell him. They must have done. There's no then, other then way. He would have been frightened of the sound the rocket was making. Ah, 
but he's just a. <laughs> but you know I'm right. No, because the rocket's the way he's going to get out of here. Did you see that? Because he turned the rocket on and then he got out of there. Yes, but even four-year-olds aren't so stupid to think that they can shrink down to the size of a toy rocket and escape on that. He didn't say that. He just said, I turn this on and I will be in another place in the body of a tum 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 of a monster. Thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks for answering that, Dan. I, I appreciate you, you answering that yeah, question. Yeah, <laughs> Dan, why did you call him a wanker? <laughs> okay, so I understand that the... So the scene set up like this kid wants a toy rocket. I get so angry during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the kid wanted a toy rocket because, uh, you know, toy rocket, it's cool. Mm. And then, you know, they take the batteries out and put it down tell him, you know, no, too noisy. Yes. And his sister gives him the rocket and says, you know, take it between you and us. The kid then does the heel move of taking the batteries, mm -hmm. which is really silly. Now, I understand, like, you know, it ratchets up tension, whatever, mm -hmm. stuff like that. You have and to then, have an inciting incident, and he is four. You have to have an inciting four-year-olds are stupid, and he's, and he's four. But not all four-year-olds are stupid. They are. Not all four-year-olds. They are. And how old is your point, oldest? They do four. They oh, right. do turn to the kid and they say to him, "Listen to me. Too noisy. You can't have it." Mm -hmm. So they tell him. But they tell him too noisy. Can't have it. They don't tell him too noisy. Can't have it. Monster's gonna smush you. No. That's a fault on their part. Not saying monster going to exactly. smash you. But then my favourite bit is he starts going off with the rocket and uh, what was the who are the father's name? John Krasinski. John Krasinski. We'll call him Jim from the Office. Jim from the Office. By the way, fucking fantastic in this film. He's yeah. excellent. Anyway, um, the kid then does what like the funniest fuck you I think I've ever seen him do to his parents, which holds the rocket above mm -hmm. his head like mm -hmm. fuck you got mine. It was what? it was pretty funny. I thought, Once wow. again quite obvious that he's not been told that there are monsters thought, in the woods wow way to rub it in your father's face kid like <laughs> fuck you dad look at me now but i love that scene it's a good scene i i the way it plays out from the daughter's perspective the fact that she is deaf and she that she is playing off of her the reaction of her parents and the way emily blunt reacts like she knows mm -hmm. she knows there is nothing that can happen now she just freezes falls to her knees yeah, oh, it's such a fucking heart wrenching film, and oh. then right up top, this is the prologue. Prologue, right up top, they they show you the monster. Like it comes out of the woods and smushes the child. Well, you get a little and bit of profile of the monster. Yeah, like, a, a lesser mm. film. Like it would have tried to convince you, oh, maybe it's maybe they're not monsters. Maybe it's just crazy. Maybe everybody's gone crazy. Maybe the mm. family are crazy. It's true. Or they'd leave the reveal until like the last act of the movie. But right up top, nope, it's a fucking monster. Sorry, it's not a monster. John Krasinski has confirmed he's the director as well and the oh, writer. Yeah. He has confirmed that they are aliens. He's the director as well? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's that, the writer, director, executive me. producer and actor. Oh, my God. Just did everything <laughs> on it. He, he M. Night Shyamalan, this fucker. I like that they're aliens. I, yeah. I, I think that works, especially uh, later on you find out that when they get near the deaf girl's hearing aid, um, there's interference with it. So, yeah. obviously, they are... They have something within themselves that interacts with that and makes it go haywire. But that that prologue where we see the alien for the first time, I liked the look of it. And I didn't like it so much when we saw it in full later on. Mm. Ashley. Yep. I have a question for you now. Yellow. I, cool. I have some points I want to make out after you've this, this question. So the movie is pretty much, for the most part, deadly quiet. Mm -hmm. mm. Which... Ballsy. Very ballsy. ballsy. Ashley, how self-conscious were you eating your popcorn? Not as, I, not as much as I thought I would be. Really? Because I noticed that after the trailers, you slowed right the fuck well, down. Well, of course, because I am a conscientious motherfucker. Thank you. But I thought it would be more of a hassle. Did you finish your popcorn? Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. No, right, no you notice before the trailers, I've polished off half of them because I knew what was has coming. has no shame. That's what we've learned here to today. To be fair, I, I bought a bag of Magic Stars and I ate all but three of them before Magic the Magic Stars started. are silent, though. Did, did I interrupt yeah. you, Lewis, during the film? You did not. No, you did not. my jumping probably interrupted you more than that. <laughs> no, your, your eating didn't, but I did notice that you slowed down when the movie started because you're a considerate, nice man. Motherfucker, like that thank about you. you. <laughs> I've got a feeling you're about to say, apart from some prick in the audience, because I know, I know it's coming. Oh, yeah, mate, come on, come on. Right, the movie is called A Quiet Place, okay? <laughs> there are like 10 lines of dialogue in the film. Three of them are screams. Don't don't come into the movie and be fucking whispering behind me. I don't care if you're whispering about the movie. I can hear you. 
because there are no other sounds on the, coming out of the speakers. I can fucking hear you. Man to the right of me, turn off. Not, not you, actually. <laughs> further down the aisle. Turn off your fucking WhatsApp notifications because I hear your phone go ding. Man in the row in front of me, don't be on your... Don't text during the movie. And person, motherfucker, right in the front row with their phone out and the brightness up for the last 30 minutes of the movie. If you want your phone out, don't sit in the fucking front row where everyone's going to see you. Sit in the but sit in the cunting back, okay? I was I was this close to getting up out of my seat, <laughs> walking down there, and just just telling them to, just to turn your fucking phone off because everyone can see you. And then the movie ended, so I didn't. Dan, next Never. time we go to the film with Lewis, let's not take him off the leash. <laughs> keep him on times of the chair. Well, I was Never. just thinking, Lewis, you should, you should tell us. Never had a good movie-going experience in that fucking cine world. That, I'm sorry. Good <laughs> world. Oh, no, I said it. Oh, the cat's out of the bag. You know, Lewis, I feel like you should, shouldn't hold back and tell us how you really feel. Yeah. Okay. You know? Well, let me start again. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm good. Uh, actually, I want to bring up a point about the monsters. It's something I always have a, a problem with in all monster fiction. And people coughing. You know, you, the shut minute, up, you probably got it. The minute We're coming out of cold season, the minute fine, the I'll title let. came, everyone just went, "Oh, I've got something in my throat." <laughs> because the minute you realise, oh, shit. you you hear a cough and you have just like people eh, 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 all around the uh, thingy, um, people laughing. So you you guys, there are no f- moments to laugh in this movie. Yeah, when the kid gets no, fucked, the kid. I have a point. Shut the fuck the child, up. The child you. being put in the box is not a funny. That moment. was. That's God. not a fucking. Oh, funny I moment. loved being we'll next. Fuck, to you. We'll get into this. And fuck <laughs> you for thinking <laughs> that is. We will get into this. I want to bring a point. You both like the design of the monster, right? No, it was, it was, it was, all, right. It was all right. I, I like the idea, but can I, I ask you? Do you think it would have been better if you never saw the monster properly? If you only mm. ever saw it, like in profile, no or like, shots of it. No, no. no. Okay, you need I, to see the monster. I always have a problem alien. with it's an alien. When you see the monster, it generally it can be a problem. I, I always find like there's a loss of interest once you've seen whatever the thing is hunting you. His, Personally, his, his it, it's thing, a personal though. thing, and it, it doesn't. It's not. It's not obviously the case for everyone. And there's evidence, but I always think you lose something from the movie of some sort of mystery when you finally see what's hunting them. Because okay, now I know it has a physical form. But you need to show it to the audience to show how awesome it is. So how how you are not able to combat this. So obvious one would be aliens. Yes. You see the alien yes. and there is no way you have a hope in hell other than getting it out of that airlock. And you're not a space person. You don't know how to work airlocks. It's true. But you, you see a monster that you think you have a, a chance of taking down, you're not going to be scared of it so much. I was trying to think of... Other movies where I've seen like a multitude of face plates opening up on a creature. Do you know where you've seen this style before? Cloverfield. Cloverfield. Jinx. <laughs> do, you want, do you want a fact? Paramount wanted this to be a Cloverfield movie. Oh yeah, yeah. That was. I was getting to that. They it could have it could have been part of the Cloverfield universe. Yeah. As in, still a very quiet film. Yes. Yeah. No. The right, film okay. would have been the same. It just would have been called the Cloverfield Silence. Number thirty-nine. The Quiet Place. Which I mean, like ten ten Cloverfield Lane is a great movie. Cloverfield isn't there, okay. Cloverfield Paradox is dreck. I, I'm I'm so glad though, that they chose to make this an original IP. Yeah, basically what it was is like the the it idea was floated out there, but then when they actually looked at the movie, they thought. Nah, this should be its own thing. Yeah, it w- I mean, it would have worked. It would have slipped into the Cloverfield universe. It's an anthology series. would have worked fine. Honestly, I think it like if it was a Cloverfield film, it would have brought it down. People would have just gone, eh, another Clover... Well, snobs would have gone, eh, another Cloverfield film. Yeah, snobs might have. Rather than, We're not snobbish. <laughs> rather than, holy shit, this movie is amazing for having no fucking dialogue and all in sign language. They, The original screenplay only had one line of dialogue. Man, man, if he could have fucking swung Please that Please tell me that him. was, fuck a monster. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, if you're going to walk around both in empty pharmacies and in woodland, mm. would you wear A, nothing on your feet, B, at least some socks? nothing on my feet. 
in woodland, there's thorns and shit and bees living in the grass. That's <laughs> where bees live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know the grass bees, mate. If you've never... <laughs> Notorious ground-dwelling bees. Next time I see a bee in the grass, I'm taking a fucking picture. <laughs> <laughs> you get a bit of, like, photoshopped it in there. Very clean. No, every, every summer they bees. go low to the ground and they live in the grass for a bit. Live in the grass? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we're, we're renting out in the countryside. About five minutes, that counts as <laughs> Larry, Larry, what are you doing? Flying? Ah, you know, Come down here, I've, you prick. I've had enough of living in the city. I want to live out in the countryside, get some clean air. So I move to the grass. Against all the rules of aviation, bees are not meant to fly. Thank you, David Attenborough. <laughs> you were saying about your feet. Yeah. Soxes will protect you from the ground bees. They won't. They will a, have more a of a bee, chance. A bee's going to get through a sock. You, you'd get warmth, is what you get from it. And it looked to be quite warm out, so... Probably just take the socks off. I'd wear socks. I'd wear the little slipper socks that got... The... No, I wouldn't, because they'll make a sound as well. But also, you have more grip with your feet naturally. Mm -hmm. mm. So it would, like, when you're running in socks, particularly if they're running on, you know, hardwood flooring, they're going to be slip sliding. Yoga socks. Place. I'd wear yoga socks. What the, what the fuck are you They're wearing? like normal socks for normal people. But like, look at these socks now. So instead of this toe yeah. bit, yeah, that's gone. Uh -huh. So you... you like a fingerless glove, but for your footsies, <laughs> and the heels, the heels empty as well. So your heel and your toes so, can touch. So. It's so you have more grip on the yogurt mats. So a shit sock, a shit yeah. sock, a, a sock with a holes shit in, so a yeah. tramp sock, <laughs> <laughs> an incomplete piece of clothing. <laughs> but you get warmth and traction. Fuck. That is... I'm patenting these yoga socks that no one else has you ever had before. Them if they're already exist. No, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so I have a my major gripe with this film is um... can we talk more about feet first? No, and how this was Tarantino's favorite movie of the year. <laughs> oh no, because until the nail. Uh, we'll, we'll get there, but I, I want yeah, to Dan. point out my my biggest issue is the these monsters are hunt based on sound. Mm -hmm. And nobody thought of increasing higher pitch frequencies to mess with them before this family did it. Once again, I mean, like, we don't... We don't it, it was know. only been th less than three months, and, you know, the world is pretty much gone, eviscerated. They would have gone to the cities first. We don't know how many of these aliens as are As far there. as we know. As far as we know, as far as we can infer from the movie, but they would have gone to the loudest places first, and wiped out everyone. I think it's here. It, no, they don't, they're not problem, attracted though. to loud places. They stay away loud. from waterfalls and such. Like here, here's my my problem though: is Las Vegas, New York, London, Paris. These cities do not sleep, and they are fucking loud. They would have gone into those cities, and I don't care how good you're hearing it, they would not be able to pinpoint things because it would have been a cacophony of noise. We're kind of shown, you know, a, a bee's eye look into their ear canal. Right, as a bee yeah. flies a into bee, the reek now. Fly into the reek. Yep. Um, when it's done living on the ground, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, climb, but, it climbs up the alien because they can't fly. But then we get we get a kind of view as to how they listen, and it's unclear as to whether they always have super hearing or they just suddenly decide to turn it on and their ear holes open wider, because they can they can locate you from miles away, but they can't hear someone breathing a foot away. What, oh, what you mean when she's behind the yeah. running water? Well, again... Like... No, not, not the, um, in the cornfield. Oh, the cornfield. The cornfield. Yeah. Well, mm. I don't care. But the consistency... Who cares? Mm. Who cares? Mm. Uh, My like, consistency, there, there Lewis, are no, no. There are no scientists left. We haven't, we haven't captured and studied them. We don't know. Well, the thing is, I like, I like the idea again, of much the, liking... Again, the story is... The pinpoint is on this family, who know next to nothing. They have three facts on a billboard. Well, their son certainly learnt nothing. Oh, well, dead children. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say the, the other son who didn't want to go and get fish. Oh, yeah. yeah. But no, they're, they're, like I said, like I was fine with the world building. But should we get to the nail then? The, the, the nail. very final destination in nail. I mean, it wasn't final destination, was it? I mean, the way it shot and framed was very much like you'd shoot and frame a final destination execution scene like set up a really convoluted way of getting like so a nail gets tugged out and gets pointed straight up from a board which would have just ripped the sack anyway but that's beside the point if, if that is death's plan in final destination six just to prick people in the foot no 
he's gone downhill. I I can like I can personally attest the fact that a nail in the foot really hurts. Mm-hmm. So and it seemed like it really hurt her. Yeah. Oh, it... but it doesn't bleed anywhere near as much as it did on her. I mean, you'd it, be it surprised. Gushy. It definitely does. You, I, you'd be surprised. No, I, I know it bleeds a lot and for a long time, but it doesn't after two seconds. You don't have a puddle of two foot. Because gravity. Right, bear in mind. Gravity that, will pull all the blood out of the hole in your foot. Bear in mind, that was a three-inch nail. So you're talking like that much was sticking out of the ground. That's effectively most of her foot. Yeah, so it didn't go all the way through. And she no. is a lady, so she doesn't have the horrible hardened feet skin that we do. Also renowned for cold feet, so I wouldn't have any blood in the foot at all. Uh, Not fucking dead. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> no, he's correct. Women have cold feet, which means there's no blood in them. Which is there's why they don't turn up to my wedding. No, of feet, course there isn't. Fuck. Otherwise, they'd be warm. What, what the <laughs> fuck? What is with you two? <laughs> Ten points to Lewis. <laughs> I, I, from frame one, fucking, I was... I don't think I'm warm anyway because she's never wearing me. socks. Sorry. I let this movie take me from frame one. I was fuck. I was fully with it. I was like f- frame one to frame whatever, however many frames there are in the movie. I didn't count them. Uh, I was Why? I was there. It, I was tense for the entire film. I was exhausted coming out of this movie. It's a very tense film yeah. for be- for being tense for the whole fucking thing, mm. and I loved it. That, like, uh, that uh, you feel very unsettled as you watch it going fucking hell like the moment they make a sound someone's dead yeah and it, you, you, you do feel like fuck please don't make any noise whatsoever yeah and you feel that yet people still laugh at putting the baby in the box it was funny it wasn't <laughs> fucking funny I did chuckle it was great being in the middle of you two to get both your reactions to everything Dan you're on the edge of your seat for most of it just leaning forward uh, head in your hands at, at some points as well I can't remember what it was that really made me groan there was something that I thought was stupid but Lewis when it comes to oh I'm a grown up now and I've got babies and children and right. responsibilities no, 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 no. this isn't because I am a dad okay? yes it's because, it is no it isn't it's because I'm a fucking human being <laughs> no you're not okay <laughs> it is wow harsh. it is harsh such a visceral image okay you have this tiny fragile new life the whole like the whole B part of the plot of the movie is, you know, oh, I hope Emily Blunt doesn't make noise while giving birth, and I hope what the fuck are they going to do when the baby arrives? Because babies, funnily enough, not known for being quiet. So they they built what essentially is a fucking coffin. Yes, baby, because they need to be prepared. Coffin. What's inevitably going to happen yes. to that baby? And that is such a horrific, visceral image. So number and one, I get, I get that being uncomfortable, is, like some people's reaction is to laugh, but fuck those people. Have some decency. Let the film take you. Live in live in this amazing world that this movie has created for you, and just be fucking horrified. <laughs> hey, I've I've got a uh, I've got a sponsor. It's baby in a box. Yay! <laughs> get your baby in a box. <laughs> Are you tired of your baby crying all like, the fucking time? Like, <laughs> like to me, it's. It's if weird, you... I don't know. Maybe, my, maybe I'm just wired weirdly, but like the idea here of kind of like it's a solemn scene, like oh, now put a baby in a box. The majority of the cinema laughed. Box. Yeah, like, but what else? Are, what else mask. are you supposed to do? That is the don't only have a fucking baby in an apocalypse. See now, here's right. Here, I I kind of feel like you know it's probably right, not okay. planned. So... Then they were in a pharmacy. You know what's in a pharmacy? Little tiny oh, hammers. You shove up your veg or whatever abortion <laughs> pills do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lewis. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ashley graduated from law school. I'm not sure you know <laughs> yeah. how easy an abortion he is it was to about do. Being a doctor. <laughs> but if you are just a bloke who is trying to survive, Let's shove a hammer up someone's genitals. Tiny hammers. They don't what hurt you. They hurt the baby. It's not no. even a baby. It's a Mate, fetus. You sound psychotic. <laughs> I know. I remember. I actually saw this at secondary school. There was this little <laughs> animation um, of what the pill does. <laughs> And it, it was literally you... hammers going into the egg. I don't know and why. And that stayed with me. I thought you were going to say, yeah, I saw this animation of like seven tiny dwarves going up into the <laughs> canal to my child. Oh, All right. Yeah. But, but day 450 or whatever day she gets pregnant, how many in-date pills are there going to be? I, See, do uh, all of them. I actually have a... If we're talking about... Get um, actual hammers. We're talking about like, like bringing a new child into 
an apocalypse, any sort of apocalypse movie, you know, and this does have apocalypse mm-hmm. movie vibes, this movie, there's always the, okay, well, how do we make tension? Okay, a baby. Mm-hmm. Baby's always a bad idea, right? Have someone be pregnant. It's, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just, it <laughs> Walking Dead. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Walking Dead. Uh, that other really bad zombie movie that was in a, that was a Romero one. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, but the difference between those and this is that they insert the pregnant character to create false a false sense of tension. Yes. This takes that and runs with it. They Things. need to the, the baby nearly gets fucking eaten in the yeah, water they, room. They do a lot with it which is great. Like my my fear was when they were going to have this baby thing is oh god, it's another baby in apocalypse scenario and it's just going to be worthless waste of time. You know, filler just for just unnecessary tension, throw it in there, ah, whatever. That'll do. You know, mm-hmm. that'll add artificial tension. This movie doesn't need any more tension than it's already got. But it did at least do... It was at least... Not realistic, but... Well, it, it they, served they, as... they, they did every everything they could with it. I don't know. It's definitely realistic. There was a real baby they put in the box. Oh, yeah. Which makes it even more heartbreaking. And <laughs> it, it served as a, another tool to show how this family still after all this time aren't prepared because one of the things they do is they're teaching their kid maths. Mm -hmm. You are now a prey animal. You are no longer the apex predator. You do not need maths. Hunt, gather, find caves. That's what you need now. Starve, starve the aliens out and then become apex again. But like, what what are you going to do? Like they, the kids were born before this all happened. Don't keep teaching them maths. Well, why not? Because they don't need why? maths. They're not going to become accountants in the monster they, world. They are when they're all dead, and then suddenly they got to go back to school for another two years else, and they're held behind. No, what because there's only a can't... population of 100 by then, and you just all need to know how to club each other on the head with rocks. Your life can't be nothing but misery and fear. It, yes, it the, does if you want to combat to them. is insert a sense of normality into life. That is what the kids are... I'm yeah, no, I, for. I agree with this. Without a routine, you go insane. You become the stupid, crazy character in Apocalypse. Oh, well, I, yeah, I, I know. True. I know. As an Apocalypse, I'm the first one to start my own cult. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I'm not going to learn maths in an Apocalypse. <laughs> you didn't haven't learned maths. Full stop. Five is a number. Fuck! You proved me wrong. Thank you. All right. So, all right, let's try and try and get a small case for thoughts here. Um. We're going to have to wrap it up soon enough, aren't we? We are going to wrap it up soon. I would like to say, I like, like, sometimes I don't like, I didn't like this in Tomb Raider because it was too much, I felt. I didn't like Tomb Raider. No, (laughs) but I like the constant, like, quite near the end, it's constant, like, here's a problem, quick solution. Here's a problem, quick solution. Mm -hmm. And there's no real stopping or letting up. There's no, like... The movie doesn't stop. Yeah. There's Mm. no, like, oh, we're going to have a nice cuddle. No, we've... Lost someone dear to us. Just have a moment to embrace. No creatures are coming. They do have a nice cuddle with the iPod, and that was quite nice. I like that. Yeah, it's like it's like fucking hell. Things are going to shit, and I do. I need time to process it, but I'm not giving time to process it. Fuck, I've got to move. Oh god damn it! Just give me a moment. The very end, though, I want to talk about as well. Um, It must have been the one conceit. I said this to you. Cocking the shotgun. Cocking the shotgun. Yeah. (laughs) It must have been the one conceit of uh, of Bay because he was producer on this. Do you wanna? Fact. Yeah, go on. I was, I was listening to an interview with John Krasinski. Yeah. And this, this came up, the shotgun cocking yeah. cut to black credits. Uh, Krasinski said that a producer on the movie, he didn't name names, didn't say which <laughs> producer, <laughs> just said that a producer came up with that idea. I fucking knew it. I kind of, kind of guess. Fucking knew it. We see an old man and an old woman. Yes. That old woman is deaded. Do we Crazy assu- old prospector. Do we assume that she was deaded by a, an alien? We can't assume anything. Well, because... oh, no, we have to, because the only reason that dude screams is because, fuck it, he's got nothing left to live for now and screams and... Isn't Which, it, for all we know, she's gone out and cut her wrists. We didn't see no, her, her, guts, her mangled properly. Her guts were out. Were they? Yeah, no, so she had a cut in her stomach and her guts were out. Which is either... Well, in that case, yes, the monster did it. So the monster then doesn't hunt for food? It hunts just to squish? Yeah. But Possibly. then the ma- the old man was taken... Oh, no, we didn't see that either. Right, okay. But the, the old man was inconsiderate as fuck. Let 
the let the other humans go away before yeah. you I mean, sacrifice there is yourself. A child. There's a child there, mate. Yeah. I know you've lost your wife. Right, okay. We're wrapping this up now. What's that child doing out of his box? Yeehaw, my <laughs> wife's dead. I got no more gold to mine. 20 seconds. Sir. 20 seconds, Lewis. Sum up your feelings in the movie. I fucking loved it. Post Oscars movies, and we're discounting like the early January stuff. Yeah. This is my favorite movie of 2018 so far. Absolutely adored it. Okay, Ashley. A well-made film, a very nice thought went into it, just not my cup of tea. Fair enough. It's all right. Uh, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, one of the best thrillers I think I've I've seen this year. It's a horror. It's not a horror. It's not a horror. It's not it's a horror. horror. We won't get into it. We're not getting into this. Uh, I recommend it. Definitely go see it. Absolutely Ooh. worth a watch. Ooh. Also, the corn silo scene is really good. I have a segue to get us into our break and next part. Oh, yeah? yeah. You have a break us into our segue and into our pod wife. Yes. Go for it. <laughs> Um, John Krasinski again this is from the same interview I was listening to earlier mm. John Krasinski said that one of his favourite films is Rock and Roller <laughs> not no way. not not even kidding like he he loved he loves the crawfish scene mm. in Rock and Roller and the ecosystem speech that goes with it mm. we'll, we'll, we will get there Guys, mm. Guy Ritchie is directly responsible for A Quiet Place. We can attribute <laughs> A Quiet Place's success to Guy Ritchie's influence. So that Lovely. makes you guys like it less, yeah? No, I love it even more now. Right, okay. So we're going to take a short break, get a few drinks, and we'll come back to you, and we're going to leave you with our pod wife of this month, which is, who is it? This month's hashtag pod wife is the Comedy Geek Podcast. Give them a listen. There's a promo. We'll be back in a minute. See you guys. Get out! Everybody out! It's coming! It's coming! I can't believe the cheek of it! Absolutely ridiculous! Outrageous behaviour! Scandalous! The audacity! This could be a life or death situation. So me go bum! There's no money! There's no money left! It's all gone into Bitcoin! And it costs you to buy what you're wearing for I am a real doctor. Hang on. Is this porn? No, 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 no. no, no, no. It's not porn. No, it's no, not no, porn. Definitely not. No, no. no. Jame of Thrones, Jim Appel. Jame on toast, Jim Bob. What? In my opinion, there was a total lack of things being stuck up other things. The Comedy Geek Podcast. Search for Comedy Geek on your favourite podcast app. And we are me, me. back from break. I thought, I thought I didn't, I'd interrupt this time because we yeah. didn't do it up, up top. <laughs> I know, that's fine. Welcome Guys, back, shut everybody. up. You have a sponsor. We got a sponsor. Yes, you do. Yay. This month we're spotted by... Spotted by Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever got through one of these? <laughs> <laughs> Point and laugh at Point the and laugh. who can't talk ripe. <laughs> can't you can't talk a ripe. for talking. <laughs> can't talk ripe, can you? can't talk ripe. That's the joke. Yeah. Fuck yeah. The we're, we're, sponsored by, <laughs> we're sponsored by Dan's joke. <laughs> <laughs> this month we are sponsored by Glitterbox. It's glitter in a box. Glitter in a box. You've got to clean this up now. Shit. Is there a theme tune? You got glitter in a box, glitter on your shoes, glitter everywhere, glitter in your dog. Why are you letting dog eat glitter? Ah, shit, glitter box. That was very close Love to it. our baby in a box sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give him one of those pretentious, like, finger clicking claps. No, because that was spike microphones. Thank you, uh, Ashley. Or you'll hit the pop filter like microphone. I did. I don't know if listeners heard that. I flicked the microphone. Jolly good. <laughs> right, moving so, right along. Oh, full start of the month. Losing what shit fancy did we watch, free... Dan? No, I'm singing shit. a Muppets song. I don't care. Shut up. We'll we... get stroppy right criped. <laughs> <laughs> we watched Rock and Roller this month. What's a rock and roller? And I'll tell them, the real rock and roller wants the fucking lot. <laughs> Uh, directed by Guy Ritchie, came out in 2008. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, we it did. It stars Gerard Butler, 
Tom Wilkinson, Andy Newton, <coughs> Mark Strong, Idris Elba, <laughs> Tom Hardy. Why? Because that's Jimmy who Mystery should have started. <laughs> It started you a see, lot of people who didn't need to, didn't when need to be in it. That you're a con. Yeah. <laughs> they get fucked. <laughs> yeah. A lot of famous people in it. It uh, hit the number one UK box office on opening week. Budget of eight million. Made a box office gross domestically of, or from what I can tell anyway, of twenty five million seven hundred thirty nine and fifteen dollars. Guys, mm. what what was the production budget? Have you got that? Production budget. No, I don't. I couldn't find it. Another <laughs> budget was <laughs> eight million. <laughs> you come unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> so before watching the movie, right? Yeah. I um looked up where it came in in the Guy Ritchie output, and it and I'm it's average. No, no, like time wise. Oh, time wise. And it's two thousand and eight. Yeah, September fifth, two thousand eight. Yeah. So I'm I I did that before watching the movie. So I'm going into the movie already worried because it's right in the middle of his his troublesome years. Like we get locked up, we get snatch, and then Madonna happens, and he does a couple <laughs> of short films about Madonna. And Madonna does, happen. and he does swept away, and he does revolver, and he does a couple of Madonna music videos. Oh I mean, this is before Richie comes back in like 2010. With a, he's got a new groove as an action director with Sherlock Holmes. So this, this falls right in his troublesome period. Mm-hmm. So I'm heading into the movie with trepidation. I love the idea of like you see a time of his life and you see Madonna happens. Yes, <laughs> and then his life carries on. But I mean, you can, you can though with Guy Ritchie's life, you can. Madonna happens here. Madonna music video, Madonna music video, Madonna stars in this movie, Madonna does something in this movie, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Divorced Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> it's true, it's happened. But tell me, what did you guys think? Opening thoughts? Bad. Um, Bad? <laughs> you didn't like it? It was a terrible gangster film that doesn't know what gangster films are by Britain's answer to Tarantino. Fuck off <laughs> it's quite high praise that is very high praise it, it, it was what it's, way is it's Guy nothing Britain's but answer to tarantino because like tarantino does, does he films defend francis ford coppola have you stolen that from a nuts pull quote for revolver <laughs> <laughs> like tarantino films it's nothing but monologues and shitty accents there are the monologues in this aren't aren't even monologues Monologues, soliloquies, shitologues, shitologues, yeah, logs of shit. Yes. Well, my my thoughts are. <laughs> so um, I'll give you a little this the little fact I've got here for you may uh, may help explain this movie a little bit. Uh, May two thousand and seven, Richie announced his production, produced by Tough Guy Films. His his personal mm-hmm. thing. Oh, never would have guessed. And I know. Funny that, isn't it? Guy <laughs> Richie's got a production company called Tough Guy Films. No, 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 not Tough, tough Guy. Tough, tough guy. Oh, tough guy. Tough Sorry. Guy. Sorry. Okay. Uh, and Studio Canal. And then it was distributed by Warner Bros. But May 2007 is when this started. And this came out September 2008. It was a year. Yeah. A year worth of work. So a year, year and a half, yeah. Rushed. To wrangle that me? crew as well. To wrangle that crew. I don't know. I mean, it's... Get that, get that filmed, edited, um, screened, uh, produced and released. No, for a movie this... This size, set in one place. I think <laughs> this size of four I sets. think a year and a half is a, is an adequate adequate production time these days. I mean, you know, probably could have done with six months more work on it. Good. I, mean, I think that's. A, I think for a movie this size and scope is about average these days. Yeah. Anyway, as I say, I'm, I'm heading into the movie cautiously. Mm. Well, and then the movie starts. I'd never seen. I I thought I'd seen this movie because I thought this was Revolver. I thought I'd seen this movie. I thought it was Revolver. I remember Revolver being weird. Yeah, a very strange movie. And then coming into this, I it, remember Revolver being fucking shit. It was. It was. There was an animated scene in that. I think genuinely one of the worst movies I've ever seen. So we. We. I mean, we'll get into all that. But as I say, I'm, I'm going into the movie worried, and then I and then I learned that Jerry Butler is the lead. One of the leads. Yeah, I no, call the lead. lead. Uh, He's top build. 
I guess he is the lead, yeah. yeah. No, he's not. The lead is Mark Strong. He's, Mark Strong isn't top build. Mark Strong is a side character, though. He's the One, narrator. Two, Jerry Butler is the lead. He's He gets top billing and... Gross. I don't like Jerry Butler movies. He's all right. No, he's not. He's actually... This is actually How the, many all right Jerry Butler in. movies are there? This? No, isn't even this. But I think no, 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 no. Because whether it's his fault or the way it's written, he was bad in this. He was a bad see, character. Actually, you know, sorry, let me re- rephrase that. How many good yeah. Jerry Butler movies See, I can't think of good. Mm. I can see. think of decent. Okay, no, give me There's decent then. Give me decent. 300. One. Um, no, that, what, that what was that movie chick where flick. There's a chick he, flick he's um, quite good in. He enacts revenge on this There's guy. There's a chick who... flick Jerry Butler's in. Ugh, only one. Well, what is that movie? I'd have to go search it, but um, it's like he, he enacts revenge on a dude who uh, rapes his wife and kills his family. And he basically straps him down to a chair and he tortures him for like two hours. And that's the whole movie. That's yeah. Hard Candy starring Ellen Page. <laughs> you've con- what you've film. done is confused Gerard no. Butler with Ellen no. Page. It's, I promise you, it's, it's a film. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. We all do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is a, a, a what? A, a, like, I'm they Ellen look Page. They look the same, yeah. I'm Ellen Page. What's up with you? <laughs> is that quite good? <laughs> <laughs> so um three it, minutes and thirty seconds in. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Okay, go on, go on, go on. First ever line. Yeah, the first ever line. People ask the question, what what's, what's, what's a, mean, rock, and a rock and roller? Right. The film is there. Actually, what's it mean to be a rock and roller? Come on. Uh I can't fucking remember. I watched it twice. Second time <laughs> no, second time, this was the first time I've done this in all these films. Yeah. I fast forwarded bits. <laughs> I didn't want to see the whole thing as it was. You watched Keith Lemon twice without fast forward. Yes, I did. <laughs> like, so you're saying Keith Lemon movie? But, mm, above technically, this. technically, I didn't have to watch it the second time, and I didn't have my eyes on the screen the whole time. I just had to listen out to whatever shit they were saying. <sighs> um, but yeah, the point of the Bad film riddle. to have the title is we find out at the end what consists, what a rock and roller consists of. Don't say. People ask what a rock and roller is. Why the fuck have I named this film Rock and Roller? Yeah. I'm going to tell you People what it is what, so you know. What it means to be a real rock and roller. And I tell him, I don't know. I've just made that up. Yeah. Rock it's, and roller is not a thing. You know where I it came what from? what he meant was gangster. I don't think he does because they say they're not gangsters. No. You That's know where it, it must have come from? It must have come from a board meeting where he's gone, I've got this film Rock and Roller. And they're going, what's a rock and roller? Exactly. Shit. Yeah. All right, I'll tell he's you. Like, well, come on, guys. You know. <laughs> like what, what? Like what the gangsters say? A real rock and roller. A rock. This is my Guy Ritchie impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock and roller, guys. Come on, you know. I'm, I'm tough guy. Guy Ritchie, renowned gangster filmmaker. Yeah, and they all, obviously they all speak like rock and roller. It means gangsters. Come on, Warner Brothers, give me money. <laughs> tough guy. Tough guy. Tough guy. And the gangsters okay. go down the layer. Oi, what's up, my boy? Doing apples and pears. That's exactly how they talk. And they're all named. Silly things like <laughs> one, two, and and tank, and and oh god, Bob! I can't think of a name for Bob. Handsome, handsome Bob, Bob. <laughs> or the, the guy, handsome. the guy who gives out and makes drugs. Let's call him Cookie because he cooks drugs. Yeah, funny, oh, funny. Jesus. <laughs> hey, do you want to know something fun? No. One, two lives at three, four. <laughs> I, I. You think you think I'm joking? I do. I do. I do. He lives at thirty-four. I do. I do. One, two, three, four. Get it. That is kind of fun. I can. I, that is I, a bit. It's kind of fun, ain't it? <laughs> Three minutes and thirty seconds. Yeah. My it, first proper note into is, all the opening monologue setup. Yeah, that's is, not three minutes. That's a good ten minutes. Is whoa, 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 movie. Slow down, okay? The the, the first five minutes of this movie is nothing but whip pans. Oh, voice the whole thing is whip pans. Exposition and plot plot dump. They know they'll have to pay Lenny before the month is out. Because Mr. Cole has ways of making life very, very uncomfortable. We better find it. But what they don't know is that Lenny controls the counsellors, the judges and the lawyers. No planning permission will be given until Lenny wants it. Every 15 seconds there's a new plot point, new whip pan. Like, like, ease me in movie. 
So, don't don't dump all this on me up top because I'm not going to fucking remember it. Just just mm-hmm. just start also slowly and then build to this. At that beginning, it presents characters that you think are going to be important, like state agents and shit. Yeah, and they're not. You, you see them for one line. Sweet and talk, it, me. You know, you don't you don't just what, what you don't just it? go bang straight out of the gates and what, fucking the you in the ass. The senator, what was it? Um, oh, the guy that got the lighter uh, given to him. The councillor. The councillor was, was councillor. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, he's important. No, he ain't. <laughs> he did it for maybe 10 minutes. No, three. I mean, of of those side guys, he is the most important. But that's because he has more than one line. The others yeah. who appear in that first two. 10 minutes are, are just one-liners. And also, even after that opening bit, this, they still kind of play it like that because they go... Um, uh, da, 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 da. Like they, they go, here's that person. Um, here's, is it Larry or Lenny? Lenny. Who knows? Do you, I, I can't remember any fucker's name in this. The old dude, the the mob boss. Tom Wilkinson. Lenny. Or Sydney, whatever. Sydney Poitier. <laughs> Sydney Poitier. Sydney Poitier's there. It's Potter. And we go. We'll go talk to Lenny. He likes real estate. Real estate, and he can move bricks and mortar. And then we go straight to Lenny. He goes. I love real estate. I can move bricks and mortar. You don't need to tell me twice. And then you see the accountant. This is his accountant. She's having she's she's, neutrons. She's there. She's having a weird life. And then she goes, I'm a third. No, I actually wrote this down. I'm a Sandy Newton. I'm a 30 year old accountant married to a homosexual lawyer. Every fucking character needs an intro, whether that's through narratives or just plain she stated says to the it's camera. It's a marriage of convenience. And I, I can't help but feel. Yeah. Like Guy Ritchie wrote this while he was married to Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it was just a this just Guy Ritchie trying. Help me, Guy Ritchie is a homosexual Help me, lawyer. Ronda. <laughs> that's so, a that's a short circuit two reference for you, yes, you short is. circuit two fans. Johnny Five so, is alive. It takes roughly eighteen minutes for them to set up everyone in this movie. Like eighteen minutes of you're not paying attention, of mm. going okay, so that's them. Okay. So who's this fuck? Okay, so that's him. Right. Now, who is this you're putting in? Wait, why do I need to know about the fucking counsellor? Why are there two accountants? There's just fuck. so much up top in those first five, six yeah. minutes. And Which does... two minutes later, the plot happens. Yes, yeah. the first five, six minutes. You don't need them. You don't need to know all so this. Guys, yes. What's the plot? Uh... <laughs> well, the plot is they want... So two, two right. of the guys... Wanted to buy a property, which I want to get into because why the yeah. fuck are crooks trying to upsell a property? Right. That's okay. not gangster. Immediately you're wrong. The plot is not about that. <laughs> she got no, no, that's not the plot. Was... The plot is about the painting. Yes. So, yeah. There is a Russian who oligarch. lives at Wembley Stadium. Yeah, who is who based has on, well Roman Abramovich. Thank you. Who has a lucky painting. And he wants to do a deal with Tom Wilkinson. So he gives Tom Wilkinson the lucky painting as a sign of good faith. Tom Wilkinson then has the lucky painting go missing, which we later find out is stolen by his stepson, who is a rock and real rock and roller, Johnny Quid. And then I don't know. Toby Kibble. I don't know. I don't know after that. I feel I feel I did well up until that point. You you did very well. And then, then, but it, then I don't know. Then your description fell apart, much like the movie fell apart. No, the, no, I followed it perfectly, but it made no sense. The painting was a MacGuffin, and yeah. there was no reason for him to give it out as a sign of good faith. Because number one, who the fuck has a lucky painting? Lucky fucking painting. Oh yeah, I'll keep it in my pocket. Russian people. <laughs> Have this you Russian never person. met a Russian oligarch? And they then, all oh, have, have lucky paintings. Right, have. Guys, I have a question. Go on. What was the painting of? It was a whistler. Uh-huh. mother from Mr. Bean. <laughs> Actually, you got... No, what, we didn't see... They, they didn't show the painting. They that do. is the correct answer. Yeah, they they do show never the show no, the painting. No, they don't. The whistler was the one he used to cover the space where it was. Yeah. Oh, and that's when God. Tank comes in and says it's a whistler. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a point in the movie that they never show you the painting. Like Tarantino's fucking briefcase. <laughs> right, this doesn't make Guy Ritchie UK's Tarantino. It makes Guy Ritchie a cheap, pale imitation. At Let's be frank, this... most UK stuff, which is copying other stuff, is a cheap, pale imitation. Mm. Uh, let's be fair, this this isn't like Richie at his best. No, I mean, oh, you can yeah. tell 
that Guy Ritchie here has been given a budget to work with. Although, thanks to Dan, we don't know what that budget is. <laughs> Eight million. The movie... Eight million? Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. You see, the movie just feels slicker and it, feel, it feels shinier than his other movies. And, you know, it, that that kind of sits with the plot, kind of, with the high stakes money game and the upmarket mm. real estate shit. But then everyone in the movie is playing it like they're lock, stock, cockney criminals, which doesn't gel No, this... with, with what... <clears throat> the plot is this it? this is very clearly a comedy it's tonally inconsistent it's not a comedy no but i think it's supposed to be no i think i think, everyone I think supposed to be a comedy and snatch are comedies and i don't think this is no i don't think it is i think this well see i would argue that they're ones it's are a, it's a, it's gangster really... films but they have comedy in them see i wouldn't it, you go back and works. watch them and they are pretty much out and out comedies there are things that it wants you to laugh at but you don't i mean we'll get to the incident in the car shall we say he's going for a light-hearted romp yeah Yeah, effectively that he's going for the tone of lucky number 11 oh god no i don't oh god he is isn't he yes he is oh thank you yep there you go do you know, I, I put a note here as I was watching this movie, and I just put down, it feels like Guy Ritchie is parodying Guy Ritchie. Yeah, like, the, the, there is a is scene this movie feels like. fairly early on where Guy Ritchie, they they rob the guys, the accountant gives them the job, and they rob the guys, and Guy, um, Jerry Butler can't find reverse in, yeah. in the car. And that's that shot is shot, and it feels like the, those early uh, Ritchie movies, like Lockstock and Snatch. And yeah, yeah. I, I th- that that scene, I quite like them. That that scene works. A uh, to a point, but, but it's I... tonally inconsistent with the rest of the movie. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, this this movie is tonally all over the place. Yeah, it is. It starts. So the movie starts with as we've done a lot of preamble here. God, you're at the start. I'm at twenty six minutes in. Okay, no, fuck it. Let's just go to that then. Can we? Yeah, we can go. Can we jump? Can we jump a quarter of the way through the movie and be done? I'm, I'm well, at the first we, meeting at Wembley. We've had one, two, and I can't remember Idris's character. Mumbles. Uh, Mumbles. Oh god. They. <laughs> ugh, fuck the names. They had. To... No, no, East End blokes. They all got to have names like this, innit? it? Mumbles oh, and yeah. fucking Cock Harry. Cock Harry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, w- I went down to see Mumbles. Which Mumbles? You know, Mumbles. You know, Mumbles. M- Mumbles Smith or Mumbles Johnson. Fucking hell. No, nah, Mumbles nah, nah, nah. Mrs. Mumbles boy. Oh, Mrs. Mumbles yeah, boy. Yeah, little kid, but used to run round, run the yard a little bit. Ain't not on Fucking Bixi too. hell. <laughs> him who could count a three. What should we call him? <laughs> oh, what, 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 one, what? two. One, two. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, Mumbles and one, two need money, so they rob some people of money. Turns out they robbed the Russian to pay off this guy who's in a, it's a very messy plot. Uh, to pay off this guy who is trying to make a business deal with the Russian. Yeah. Like in the first, yeah. in that big plot dump in the first six minutes, I think it's like they had a building. They went into business with Tom Wilkinson. Something happened where that all fell through. They owe Tom Wilkinson two million and they, they get the two million. No, they don't get the two million in the first six minutes. They owe Tom, Tom Wilkinson two million. Then the movie starts. And then in the first... 20 minutes things happen they, they pay him off yep so that that entire six minute opening is paid off in the first 20 minutes of the movie yeah really that and, and then, then handsome we continue bob, that and handsome bob going to prison should have been the main focus really handsome bob i have a problem with handsome bob's we'll storyline yeah we'll get into that when we get to that car <laughs> oh, scene we'll get to that <sighs> don't you worry jesus Christ. um so it happens and then the painting gets stolen and then the, the movie starts and it's okay who stole the painting yeah and then it jumps from character to character it's but a then very it fucking tells you <laughs> it tells you who it's not lucky number 11 because at the end it all comes together here they just tell you in the second act Oh yeah, he, he took the painting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <I think laughs> that was so. very to be. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's a very hard movie to explain because plot is going in different directions at different times. Yeah, all over the place. The the plot, it's it's like if you fill a balloon with paint 
and drop it from a very high height. And we we, we say the paint in this balloon is the plot. Mm. And you drop that balloon from a very high height and it splooshes on the ground and there are little flecks of paint splayed out all over the place. That's what happens to the plot. Never comes back together. No. Mm. No, it like things are just all all over the place. You have the big drop at the beginning, plot goes all over the place, nothing comes back around. And it's so it's so I mean, in terms of what we do have of the plot, it's handholdy because it's oh yeah, this guy yeah. has the painting. This is where these people are now. But other things are just so confusing. Like when um uh Lenny has um so they're talking about I thought you blokes I thought, Jen. Who's Lenny? The old old gangster man. So old right. gangster king man. He says, I thought you blokes drank vodka. Uh, whiskey is a new vodka. So then he has a drink of whiskey. And then he gets into his car and says, that fucker tried to poison me. Did he? Did, don't know. No. Did he? I, we have two assumptions to make. One, that was cheap whiskey that the guy hated and said, oh, it's shit, nasty poison. Yep. Or two, Lenny's built up a resistance to that specific poison for his entire life. <laughs> and he knows it. And he knows the only cure is a fucking wet wipe. I, yeah. I don't think this is that other movie that's really good. <laughs> um, yeah, so actually, I kind of liked uh, that mob boss character. No. I, I Purely because they set Lenny. up to be such... Lenny. Lenny, Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> I'm remembering his name. Of it's mice and men. Like... Of mice and men. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a prick. Look at the rabbits. He's such a. I'm the boss of this town. That's not going to screw you in the ass. Yeah. I'm the boss. That's not going to screw you in the ass. And I, I like, yeah, fine. It is a bit on the nose, but I did enjoy, you know, him getting hit in the leg with a golf club repeatedly. Yeah. I like, and you know, I like that bit. So, but it still Thanks. wasn't properly paid off he because it was like a budge. Yeah, but the guy but stole your was lucky painting. Fucking stupid to go with him, seeing as he owes him uh, his painting. lucky painting, and he's owed him it for a week now. Although and, the oh, Russian owes him seven empty mil. Empty golf course for a hole nine, right slap bang in the middle of the golf course. No one is around. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, maybe I'll just go back to par. You know, I'll just go back to hole one. Yeah. I'll try and improve my game. <laughs> this is a stupid fuck. I'm just going to practice my swing over here. You guys carry on without me. No, you don't get it. He rules his town. Oh, yeah. He's king of so... his town. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he was. So I'm at 26 minutes. Go on. Um, where the junkies come into the bar for the first time. Yeah. Junkies? I didn't know there were any junkies There's in junkies this film. junkies in this film. Maybe they could have told us a few times about the junkies. Did you not notice them? No. Well, to be fair. They were subtle about it. <laughs> were they yeah, indeed? It, it's funny. I don't have any notes about junkies in, in my notes. Yeah, I see. I do. I do. Because I, I watch the background. <laughs> 20, so 26 minutes in, the two junkies come into the bar and like try and flog Fucking a fur shit. coat and whatnot. Yeah. Junkie number two, the skinnier, it's more mm -hmm. like Lena, one of the two, yeah. tries to nick a lighter and then has the most bizarre voice. I don't know. Did you, <laughs> did you guys catch it? Scottish. He wasn't Scottish. He tries to nick a lighter and then says, and then Idris Elba takes it back off of him and he's like, what, it's only fire. Oh, that's and right. And that, oh, yeah. that is a pitch perfect, spot on, non-exaggerated representation of, of that actor's choice. <laughs> he had one line in the movie and they decided, fuck it, that's sake will do. And I can promise, I, I say I promise, I would put money on it that he had at least five lines to begin with and they heard his choice and were like, <laughs> well, in the edit, we're like, maybe, he did maybe have other we lines. trim his part down. He did uh, have other lines. <laughs> he didn't have other lines. He did because those two turned up again at Rock and Roller's place. And he doesn't speak. He does. He doesn't speak. He does. What does he say? He, we know you. You're a proper Rock and Roller. He doesn't say that. The other one says that. Yeah. They Well, don't they prostrate themselves in front of him and they both say something? No. Uh, they never let him speak again because yeah. he says, what, it's only fire. Is he that orc that chases Aragorn off a cliff? Yeah. That is, <laughs> he sounds exactly <laughs> like that orc. off the cliff. Yeah, that, yeah, that was not a, not a good choice. 27 minutes in, right? Right yeah. after the junkie scene. Yeah. The bar, the, the munch bunch or whatever they're called. <laughs> <laughs> the munch bunch. Hang out in. Yeah, the cabbage patch kids. But yeah. <laughs> The bar that the garbage pail kids hang out in. Yeah. They've got 
three work three arcade cabinets, a darts board, and a pool table. That's a fucking good bar. It's like, their little area. That place seems like an awesome place to go and have a drink. But that was in 2008. These days, it's like, uh, it's like a vegan gastropub that only serves tapas and gin. <laughs> That's all right. I'll go there tomorrow. I, I can get by with that. I can get they've, by. they've also lost the arcade cabinets, the pool table and the darts board, though. Uh, it's gastropub yeah. now. That's that's my that's my point. It just looked like a nice place to drink. I've also got something at twenty eight minutes. Yeah, now. but you'd never you'd never have gotten in there unless they go. Oh, it's it's Gingery Lewis. Hey, it come snaps. on, Gingery right, Lewis, snaps. get in here. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they call me. <laughs> twenty eight minutes. All right, something isn't sitting quite right, and it's taken me a while to figure it out. Mm. As good as most of the cast is, I don't believe any of them in this no. movie. They yes. they all feel like they're proper actors doing acting. They're putting on accents. You know, I, I don't believe that any of them are hardened criminals. Mm-hmm. Like when you when you go back to Snatch and Lockstock, and you know it's Hell, got even Lair Cake. It wasn't Guy Ritchie though. Was it Lair Cake not Guy Ritchie? No, no Lair Cake was good. Uh, yeah, you, you, like those, those films. Though, they had they had Vinnie Jones. They had Lenny McLean. They had like an unknown Jason Statham. They had the other whatever the guy who played Bricktop was. Then you know people who didn't need to act. Those were just their natural speaking voices. And you know some of them like Lenny McLean actually lived those fucking like gangster lives. That was mm. that was natural. This in this movie just feels forced coming from everyone. Mm. It does. Just they were cut and paste into a gangster movie, but they weren't gangsters. They're all there like, hello, I'm acting. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me act. Oh, hard. Just, just by having a having a one monosyllabic name and then talking like this, that makes you a gangster. Thorrit, Thorrit, guy, guy, <laughs> guy, can I take that again? I, I, I put an H on hard. Oh, guy. shit. Let me try one more time. What's that? We're done filming. I'm Shit. acting. I'm a ward. That's it. That's it. We'll check the gate. I'm going. <laughs> I'll be in my trailer. Thank you very much. Can we Can we get to the Bob scene? Are we talking um, about... Okay, so... Hans, yeah, that's where you guys I am. Got anything else? Can we talk no, about that? That's where I'm at. Hans and Bob is going to do a five stretch, and they keep using the word stretch. Yeah. Right? So, like, oh, five stretch, two stretch, 24, three, three stretch. Like, <laughs> yeah. One, two mean, stretch. You mean years in jail, mate. Just say years in jail. It's fine. No, 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 no. Because then the coppers will know they're talking about it. <laughs> So he's going he's gonna to go to jail for five years, for whatever reason, which should have been a main point of this movie. should have been, like, the main through point of this whole film. No, no one cares about Anson Bob. No. It would have made, maybe would have made more Thank sense. You. For... Thank you for saying that, because I've got a point about that. True. 3125, uh, Jerry Butler says, Bob, you're my best mate. And then later on. We have not seen him engage once with handsome fucking Bob. We have only seen him talk and be with Idris Elba in yeah, this Yeah, because movie so later far. on he's in a cap with Idris Elba and Idris Elba says, I'm your best mate. I'll yeah. talk to your mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. He admits he didn't. Well, yeah. Bob's not his fucking best mate. We've seen him do fuck all with Bob in the past half an hour. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's can, get let's, to the, Can let's we talk about the thing. scene? The, the in the scene. car. Mm-hmm. In the car. Okay. Guys, you know what? Yeah. Gays are fucking hilarious. Aren't, Can aren't, we talk about this? Aren't homosexuals funny? <laughs> like, right? It, it's, it comes out of nowhere. I've done it just, yeah. He's gay. Uh, ugh. Ugh. Slam the brakes on. Get out of the car. Gross. Shout at your best mate. Call yeah. him a fairy boy and whatever. Yeah, Gerald Butler like, hams it up. But I did think Tom was... Hardy at least was playing someone who got, like, uh, playing a decent job of someone who went, ah, oh, shit, I've made a massive mistake oh, yeah, no, Tom you. Hardy is fine in that moment, but the scene as a whole... Oh, it's fucking It's dreck. really hard to dreck. watch. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, although, to be fair, it's a pretty weird way for Bob to come out. See, I don't want the strippers, one team. Okay. I want you. I want you. you know, I don't just... want any girls. I want you. I mean, if you're going away for five years, take your chances. Yeah, but like, 
be a bit more sensitive about it. You know. Nah, there are boys. They are nice sensitive. Uh, yeah. So but, yeah, the, the the right the the movie is full of gay panic, and we learn we learn in this scene that Bob is gay, and Jerry Butler reacts awfully to it. And the the only thing that Bob wants before he goes away is to spend the the night some time with Jerry Butler. And he's like, "Oh, gross! You're gay. Get your you give me gay, gay lurgies." <laughs> And this and this continues for the for the rest of the movie. It's the a standoffish movie. nature. That's the B plot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is the B plot of the movie. Is just, uh, Bob's gay, gross. It, it's one of many B plots in this movie, and they come back to go. You it's go. A, we've oh, got. Oh wait, shit! This is still happening. Yeah, there okay. is an A to Z plot in this movie. <laughs> there are twenty six different plots, none of which have anything to do with the but other anytime another plot comes back into relevance you go shit that yeah okay yeah that, that was happening right sorry what was this about again <laughs> can you can you tell me you know I... and they will tell you you yeah. get a fucking narration <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah in, in spite of all the complaints that i have and that we're making mm. when i was watching the movie i i, I was i was I found myself not hating it on the whole. No. You know, I was... It doesn't do enough to make you hate it. No. No. Weirdly. It's, like you said, it, it was. It just seems like Richie was trying to imitate his earlier work. Yeah. Which is, it's a bad choice, really. Poor yeah, form. Yeah. I'm trying to think and if like I Really, it obviously, not. imitate his work. Like the crayfish... Like the pigs from Snatch. Oh God! Can we talk about that crayfish scene? You mean you mean John Krasinski's favorite scene, <laughs> one of his favorite movies? <laughs> yeah, like dunking a man into crayfish. Like, crayfish will eat you up. I was like, will they? Yeah, I I don't tell you something like about crayfish. crayfish. They were introduced at this point. They destroyed their ecosystem. Blah 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 blah. Cockney rhyming slang. Blah blah blah. I'm gonna dunk you in the Thames now. With crayfish and not covered in shit. Also, it's it's against Lenny's character in every way because we know above all else he's not a gangster, and he hates immigrants, doesn't he? He hates even immigrants. if you're not an immigrant, he'll fucking call you a immigrants. fucking immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone he spoke to was <laughs> a fucking immigrant, immigrant. Yeah. and yet he praises his crayfish from coming all the way over to America from America, <laughs> working hard. <laughs> <laughs> and becoming a dominant species. Do you think he passed himself in a mirror and goes, fucking immigrant. Fucking immigrant. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> oh, whoops, I'm sorry, me. <laughs> oh, his character was bad in this film. Oh, uh, wasn't but he that, just? Like, all I know about crayfish are they're delicious and they look kind of like crabs. Yeah. That's as much as I know about crayfish. But luckily, this movie took five minutes out of the running time to give you a history lesson on crayfish. You mean a monologue about crayfish? I do mean a monologue about crayfish. Pretty sure that was bollocks, but that's where we learn his son is alive, and that's where we meet. That Toby is Kibble's what character. inspired a quiet place. That monologue. No, the fact that these. <laughs> no, look, you're you're stretching the I'm truth. Not the fucking. He's what he said in the you interview. Said what he's John like Krasinski yours. said in the interview is that that speech directly inspires a quiet place, like the the fucking aliens coming from a different ecosystem coming to this ecosystem and ravaging it. Thirty nine <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Is that ludicrous? That yes. is ludicrous. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's ludicrous. Okay. <laughs> ludicrous is in it, and bless him, he tries. Uh, he's it, not bad. He's yeah. not bad. He's not bad, ludicrous. The rocker, Lewis Christopher, is not bad at all. The, the rocker comes in and... I don't know if his name's Lewis Christopher. I'm just guessing his name's Lewis Christopher because it's ludicrous. The rocker comes in and has a moan about a smoke machine. <laughs> The rocker that looks like Madonna had a hand in the design there. Looks like Pete Doherty. Yeah. So the, the rocker wants dry ice, and Ludacris has a smoke machine, bubble machine, and even love marines. Mm -hmm. My hat is deep and full of magic. I got rabbits, handkerchiefs, and ladies of the pole drinking black label. I got smoke machines, bubble machines. I even got love marines. And still, the hat goes deeper. What is a love marine, please? 
it's a stripper wearing an army uniform. No, because I googled it and Urban Dictionary <laughs> doesn't have anything. Okay, it's an aquarium no, where no, you have loads of sex. The in internet it. cannot tell me what a love marine is, but he can get them for you. And this is his character. Well, what is it? Because Audience. ask him and he'll get it for you the next day. Hold on. Audience, if any of you know what a love marine is, could you please send us a link and yeah. let us know? I'm grateful. just a love marine. I was... Come and text my machine. Yeah, I mean, does he definitely... Listeners, hi, it's Lewis. Hi, how you doing? D- can... He definitely says love marine, right? Yes, he does. I watch it with subtitles on. <laughs> <laughs> what it is? What it is and what it do. Wait, what? What is it not? Use what your is imagination. A love marine. <laughs> Does it work for nobody but me? Thank you. This is a question. So yes. ne- neither of you have an answer to my question. I gave you many answers. Me. I can give you another. Give me another. Go on. It's two yeah. two people go into the army and they love each other very much. They're marines. What are they doing in the army? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Answer that. <laughs> All right. They go Check into the army. Mate. They go into the army. They do very well in the army. And then they get transferred to the Marines. And then they have sex. Okay. Or that was just a poem that he found. It was like, shit, that'll do for my speech. Listeners, please, please tell us the Love Marine poem in full. I, nah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, write in with what you think a Love Marine is. We'd so love the, to hear it. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, um, so they run a club, Ludicrous and... Other bloke. Other man. Yep. Run a club with... Other man. With There's lady two. receptionist. With Gemma oh, yeah. Arterton. That's the one. I was going to call her Tamara Drew. She's not Tamara Drew. No. Gemma Arterton. Arterton. And um, old gangster man, Lenny, comes in and threatens him. Yep. Says he needs the money. And uh, we get a cut away to Lenny's son. Think happens here, isn't it? Yeah, find out that Tom Wilkinson is Toby Kevill's oh, dad in the flashback, his and his mum is dead. And and Tom Wilkinson tells him that you're going back to the most expensive school in the country. Yeah. What? what? <clears throat> like, if if he can afford to send young Toby Kevill to the most expensive school in the country, mm. why does Toby? Kebble's bedroom look like a council estate masonette from circa 1992. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah. They live in a one up, one down. That's Yeah, that's like some bad production design right there, right? <laughs> it does kind of jar. Like, now that you mention it, like the room aesthetic really does jar with the fact that he's really rich. Yeah, it's a very... It's not... A, it's, it's a... Yeah, it's where it's my bedroom. I do want to talk about a dance scene. Is that... I, I thought it was funny. So again, I'm not going to mention Pulp Fiction Tarantino, Pulp Fiction Tarantino, Pulp Fiction Tarantino. The dance scene. Sorry, is that hold on. He's stuck. Bef- I need to. I need to come <laughs> stop skipping. You need to Ow! pull him out and blow him. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey now. <laughs> that would work. <laughs> the, is the dance scene before or after the um, where Toby Kebbell tries to get into the nightclub? After. Can we talk Arthur. about Toby Kebbell trying to get into the nightclub? Okay, yeah, so... that was one I skipped over on my second second watch. Because watch-through. this is this is at fifty eight minutes thirty seconds, and I I'm going to read this verbatim. I write, "Or you, world famous supposedly dead rock star whose death was covered by the national papers. I'm the bouncer at this rock club, <laughs> and there's a line full of rock fans behind you." You can't come in because you're definitely just a junkie and not a famous not a famous person that I, a rock club bouncer, and those rock club fans in the line behind you would recognise. Now go away. Ow, no. you've stabbed me with a pencil. He's wearing his junkie disguise. <laughs> He's a world famous rock star. It's like Clark Kent, you know. Glasses is fine. He's so, a world famous rock star. We, None of them. Uh, he's we've stabbing never seen. a man to death, and no one in the queue behind him goes, "Oh, that's we've, that's Johnny Quid." No, no, no. We've never seen what he looks like as a rock star. He could be in Kiss. He could. <laughs> he could, he could be in covered Kiss. in makeup. So I have a question for you. A bonus question. What's the band in the club? Oh, oh, oh! I know this. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's an ah. Uh, uh, what then? The 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 something yeah the uh, the horrors the, the killers the the, the jamming cock muscles the, ch- the Chaz and Dave <laughs> <laughs> got my beer right, on the I'll, give you, I'll, give, I'll give you guys a clue eat fresh 
Papa John. <laughs> <laughs> Papa John. <laughs> the subway. Yes, it's the subway. And that scene uh, is shot completely differently to the rest of the movie. Would you like to know why? Because they're actually shot at their live show in Bournemouth. It looks like it. Yep. Yeah. They actually had to do that song twice to get the shots yeah. right. But yeah, they were just, just they were just at the show and they shot at the subway show. Guy Ritchie runs on stage with a Canon 5D. <laughs> like, stay still, stay still, try to get you focused. <laughs> yeah, it was just they just decided, yeah, fuck it, that'll save us just some budget. Just a completely different aesthetic. Like, it was well, they had to move out of London, so train tick, yeah, that'll do them. I'll be honest, I kind of preferred that aesthetic to the rest of the movie. And, mm. as, and I like that song. It just looked like a, it just looked like a concert video. Mm. And can I say that that stabbing scene didn't seem as impactful as a man stabbing another man to death with a pencil would seem, right? I know, right? But Guy Ritchie's got Guy Ritchie. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing like, violent has happened for half an hour. Let's just stab this bouncer. Yeah, like in front looked, of a crowd full of rock fans who would really... definitely recognise world famous <laughs> rocker Johnny Quid. <laughs> it definitely looks like. He was only half arsedly stabbing, like poking him with a pencil rather than actually jamming it into his neck. Oh, but this was foreshadowed. We know he's good at pencil foo. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Toby Kevin in this movie, though. I like his performance as over the top as it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he gets enough love or good roles. I think he gets plenty of good roles. He's been King fucking Kong. Was he King Kong? Yeah. Fuck off. Skull Island, he was King Kong. Oh, yeah. And he was also Man. In that movie. <laughs> he was a man in the movie. Um, okay, so, so the dance. The dance scene in the house. Yeah. They all go to a house party. Yeah, they go to a house party. Jared, Part- uh, Jared Butler freaks out about... Um, a gay. A gay. A gay character. What's a like, gay doing here? And He's your best dance. friend. Why wouldn't your best friend be here? Yeah, like I was... I was really quite invested in the Bob and 1-2 subplot. <laughs> Like I way more invested than I should have been. Can we say it's a subplot when everything's a subplot? We, we're gonna have to. I guess we're gonna have to. <laughs> like I, I, I want, I wanted to know what happened that night, and then one minute later, after after I write that note, they reveal it was it was it was just a slow dance. Yeah, a bit of dancing. That's, it was a men's is that only what salsa was about Jerry. Yeah, that's, because he's, he's insecure. If that, I th- if, if, if that, I thought if that was the actual reveal, that is fucking bullshit. They better reveal something more later. Like, that is not a satisfying they do. conclusion. They do. The subplot. post-credits, is, they reveal more. It's a weak joke. This, the post-credits is just a continuation of, of the weak joke. joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why? Like, I, I was invested. I, like, oh, did you dance with him? Yeah, we danced. Oh, but maybe something more happened. Maybe he actually did suck his cock. No, like I would have, I would have liked that. No, oh, I know you it's, would. it's just, it's just they had a dance, and Jerry Butler is now worried he's got the gay. Yep. So what you're saying is you would have liked some sucking cock. I would have loved to suck some cock. <laughs> right. Okay. You take that out of context. I take want, you out of context. I just want to be clear because I was fine with the the dancing. I thought, huh, eh, it's kind of funny. That's funny. But anyway, One hour, four minutes. Spider hands. Super hands from Peep Show Cookie. in his monologue hmm. turns to the camera and addresses the audience directly, talking about like the meth and whatnot. <laughs> he was like, he fucking did do this or something. You can take the boy out of Peep Show, but you can't take Peep Show out of the boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, yeah, like he breaks the fourth wall and he's talking in the third person. Aye. So he like, he like shatters whatever four times three is. And it pulled me right out of the movie because it's the first and only instance of that happening. Like turning to the camera and addressing the audience directly. Why? Why do it? I didn't notice that, probably because I was desensitised to him doing it in the peep show. <laughs> it, it's, it's, there, is, there, is no, there is no other point in the movie where that happens. I mean, mm. if, it, if it was something the movie did, fine. But no, it's just completely random, out out of nowhere. Superhands is talking about his time as a drug addict. Oh, he is, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he turns to the camera. He's like, "He fucking did do this." And then it fades into a kind of memory some, of the rock and roller boat. It's yeah. just yeah. a completely it's it's tonal whiplash. Yeah. Like, whoosh, 
fuck you, now we're out of this movie, back onto a different one. Don't worry. Another that scene that goes film. nowhere and means nothing. Yeah. That's the film. Yeah. And after that, I think we get... It's the it's the second robbery, isn't it? After that... Mm, or is yes. it? Or is it? Yeah, it's, it's the rest- Eddie Elba and it's the um, restaurant come Jerry second robbery a, scene. Yeah, so we're one hour up. and eight minutes, and Jerry and the accountant, uh, band name. Oh, Jerry and the accountants. Uh, they meet in a restaurant, uh, and in the background, they're playing like uh, Chopin Nocturne up to number nine in E flat major, which Ooh, is my you. favorite piece of classical music, and I have no point to make beyond pointing out how incredibly cultured I am. <laughs> <laughs> the movie gets a point for using that bit of music. It was a good thing of me. It's the last time for Step Brothers. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, so they get that, and we yeah, get into... we're, we're in this scene, the restaurant, and okay. In the side, we get to see the street sharks rob the uh, the armored car for for money. Yeah, it's not an armored car. Oh no, no it's, it's just, not. Is it's it? Just it's, just car. Just, it's just it's just a beam or something. <laughs> because they I, decide that right. was armored Russians. That was it. Yeah, we got held up previously. Let's do the exact same fucking thing with two different people. I I st- I started off enjoying the intercutting between the dinner with Jerry and the Count and the and the second heist that goes wrong. I started off enjoying that, but it it started off strong and then it it doesn't stop. The whole scene is back and forth, like I... restaurant robbery, restaurant robbery, restaurant robbery. Like stick to the rule of three, you know. Mm. Like when uh, when, no, when Tandy film, that was out the window in this. Film. I know when when but when Tandy says, "Oh, I know what happened," and we see that she was there. Just let the scene play out in full because she's there. You don't but, need to keep telling her what happened because she fucking knows. So just play the scene out and stop cutting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's obnoxious. But also, mm. I, I think it is. I don't think it does start strong because he's. We want to know what what happened, so he's asking us in a way when he's asking her, "Do you want to know what happened?" Yeah. And if she says no, that's the proxy for us saying no. Yeah. Which, which you never want in your film. But she, but she, does, she says no. She doesn't need to know because she was there. So you have the, you have Jerry Butler comes in. He's like, "Oh, we did the robbery. Cut to the robbery." Yeah, then what they're showing the us robbery? the thing that they've already told us we Cut don't to want. The robbery. Cut back to the diner. Do you want to know what happened? I don't need to know what happened. I was there. Cut Tandy Newton in the car park, staring down. Let the rest of the scene play out in full. The way it is now, it's like it's like eleven cuts back and forth. Hmm. Yeah, it goes on for way too long. Yes, it does. That are like just tons of like running away from Russian. That Russian gets back up. It gets knocked down. It gets back up. It gets like okay. Look, I get just, it. Just I fu- get it. Right, just kill them. Just smash their skulls in and kill them. Although I did like come on. Sort of like Jerry Buttles being being chased and they're both slowing down. They're both running out of steam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was kind of fun. That was funny. But you know, if if you've listened, you know, from the Last Jedi and Master and Commander. I'm a sucker for a slow chase. I do love a slow chase where both parties are going at a crawl. <laughs> Does it work on foot? <laughs> if you're both out of breath, yeah. I mean, it yeah, would have been funny if they were both out of shape. Yeah. Oh, like one of them was a fairly th- chunky dude. Probably doesn't do much cardio. I mean, Gerard Butler's fucking ripped. Yeah. So he's probably been fine no matter what. Uh, yeah, so that happens... And then we finally that's, get to... That's the movie. So that happens. <laughs> that's the, best that's the movie in a nutshell. So that happens. Um, that we then get... Is it then we have that... We then get Johnny Quid calling cigarettes Virginia killing sticks. Mm, inside us for a monologue about cigarettes and how they market them to you. Yep. Mm, Why monologue. Does Why does he do that? Because what? Guy Ritchie, as Tarantino does, he sits round in a caf with his mates and he talks about shit. And Tarantino goes, I'll make a film out of this, but I'll call you Mr. Brown but you and see, you'll be one too. Tar- Stupid fucking names. Tarantino's monologue generally have some sort of foreshadowing in them. Yeah. Yeah, true. The Virginia Killing Sticks monologue, what does it add? It adds the, ver- the breaking uh, of a man's uh, leg uh, with uh, a golf uh, club. Uh, 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 does it? Uh, no, but it happens the, at the same time. Was that golf club <laughs> made in Virginia? Because it's sort of sticky, isn't it? It's sort of stick-like. Is it? But last, it didn't, last scene didn't of the film. A man. What happens last scene of the film? I'm clean. I'm off the star, except for these, because in the next film, I'm going to be killing people with my Virginia killing sticks. Look, is he going to throw him like look, a fucking it, gambit? It was. <laughs> it was fucking stupid in episode two. It's stupid here. You don't want the death sticks. <laughs> 
but just before is it just before that or just after that where um uh Dandy Newton and thing Thanos have, Newton. Thanos, <laughs> Thanos Newton and Ghibli Bibli have a sex scene. Uh who cares? Uh, well, yeah, got it in one. I th- I think it is. Only because um at that point there was actually supposed to be a sex scene there. But uh, Jared Butler had a throat infection and Tanya was like, I'm not kissing you. I was like, I'm kissing you. I ain't getting down with that. Don't blame her. Uh, so they came up with the hilarious montage that they had. He's dead. Yes. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Death stick. Oh, Death yeah. stick. And here's a painting that I, I stole. That I, no, that was it. I bought, oh, yeah. I forgot. They buy the painting. The, um, the Teenage Mutant off. Ninja Turtles buy <laughs> the painting off of the junkies. Yeah. Because they nick it from the rock and yeah. roller. The, the, yeah, the two junkies steal the this MacGuffin is, that is... everybody's looking for. And I'm pretty sure I've just won Guy Ritchie bingo because that, <laughs> like, that's, that's every Guy Ritchie movie. Right. I, our description of this movie is as coherent as this movie. Is. Yes, listeners, p- please. Um, we know. We know exactly how we sound right now. We're not, we're not this movie. We're not pretending that we're not being incoherent. We know. We're just three junkies sitting around talking about a film. <laughs> Soundly fire. <laughs> so when Len is in hospital and Archie comes in and tells him who, who has the painting. Right, right. And he says it's Mumbles, Bob and One, Two. And hearing him say those names in sequence <laughs> out loud like that just sounds like we should be jumping straight into a kid's TV show. Are Mumbles, Bob kids? and One, Two live in a magic house. <laughs> Mumbles? <laughs> what? Bob? What, what? And one, two, burp, 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 burp. let's go down to Trumpington. <laughs> <laughs> What's in your magical sack today? Sack magique. Thank you. Sack magique. <laughs> Tilly, it's a <laughs> secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, British TV. Teeny tot and tiny. Yeah. Uh, I'm on a boat. <laughs> no, that's Rosie um, and Jim. Rosie and Jim. I know, it's Rosie <laughs> and Jim. <laughs> anyway. Oh, man, should we just talk about... <laughs> Tiny Tots and Rosie and Jim for the last half an hour. Yeah. Don't tell me. But all with mock me accent. <laughs> oh, I'm a tot, just wheezy tot. Teeny tot and the tiny. Oh, the sack magique. We're the tots the tots TV. One, two, three, boom. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, so that happened. Back to the movie. Oh, fuck's oh, sake. Oh, do we have to? I was enjoying myself. <laughs> That's the first time I've been enjoying myself since we started talking about this. Okay, so um, shit, I've lost all. Th- all I can think about is tiny tots now. We're we're a hostage l- taken. Yeah, hospital. hostage. Oh, that's right. They take Painting. hostage. Ghibli Beverly gets tied down by the Ruskies oh, out yeah. onto his bed. Oh yes, he does. Yes, like face down. They didn't just out and out kill him. They just tied him down. And they had, had the a machete rave. at his throat. He has headphones on his head. His eyes closed. Mach- the big guy puts the machete to his neck. He's like, oh, maybe Jerry Butler's going to die. Nope, they decide to both strip off and tie Jerry Butler to a bed and have a little dance. I, 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 was, I was confused. I was like, okay, so so they're mostly naked and there's pounding techno. Is this a German club in the 80s? What's going on? Is this how they do all their kills? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, like, this must take them a long time. Roman. Roman, I want you yeah. to go and off, off this man. The bring my cassette player. <laughs> okay, make sure make sure you're wear your best leather pants. Always look your Zzz. best leather white fronts. <laughs> bring, bring craft work. Bring, bring. Music. <laughs> bring a German band. What? <laughs> <laughs> bring Dimit- the entire band. I don't care how they get here down the autobahn. I don't care. <laughs> Dimitri, can we not just kill this man this time? Well, yes, eventually. No, we must dance. <laughs> <laughs> we we must dance. We are Russian dancing men with dancing on top of Big Ben. <laughs> okay. All so... right. So they all get kidnapped and taken to the warehouse where the crayfish are. And... Warehouse? Their house. Uh, Lenny's in a wheelchair. Uh, and... They did a good rule of three there, actually. Did they? Yes. Yeah, so what's the it going to be? The rack. Thing? The rack. Are you going to? Pull my tongue out, or will it be the crayfish again? Lord of Free. He, knew, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, you know, Toby, Toby Kebbell was the best part of that scene. Yep, but that, there was also a lot of 
I know what's happened because I read the script. I wasn't involved in any of this, but I can read all of you like a fucking book. Mm -hmm. At hour and 37, we flash back again to um, Johnny at school 15 years earlier. Yeah. And he, like, Uncle Archie's picking him up and Uncle Archie's got a gun and he's, like, he gets Uncle Archie's gun and pretends to threaten the kids. And why does this happen? Because it doesn't add anything. I, they they, uh, they show it at a point where he says, you wonder who set you up for your four stretch or whatever. Yeah. And then that happens. That scene yeah. happens. Yeah. But that, that has no relevance to anything. Because later on we find out that, yeah, that didn't set him up for the four stretch. No. So no relevance. Mm. Nothing. You don't. You don't have you to use something just because you shot it. Do you know what it was? <laughs> That's what the edit is for. They didn't want to waste footage. It's like we've got to put it somewhere. Let's put it there. Like, let's. Can we? Can we talk about structure? <laughs> there wasn't. They were pin the towel on the donkey. <laughs> what scene do we put and here? And then talk about structure. Do you want to talk about structure? No, right well, I now? want to talk about structure right now because well, right. I, I want to talk about Sydney Shaw because I I don't think and. I, like, feel free to disagree. You mm-hmm. know? I thought Sidney Shaw was like the Kaiser Sose of our era. I don't <laughs> think <laughs> that setting up and paying off the Sidney Shaw reveal within 10 minutes is the best way to play it. Do you not? No. Because, <laughs> you know, hear me out. You know, controversial. But it's your main antagonist. And this reveal, the Sidney Shaw reveal, is given a lot of weight. Yes. But there is no setup, no mystery, nothing. So, like, why should we care? We don't. The second Johnny asks, like, who set you up, Archie? We we know exactly fucking who. Te- like, oh, Sydney Shaw, who's Sydney Shaw? Ten minutes later, we find out who Sydney Shaw is, and it's who we thought Sydney Shaw would be. And who set you up, Archie? Five minutes later, well, it's the same guy, Sydney Shaw, yeah. who we thought it would be. What like there's, there's nothing there. If you if you had put the film, if you had put Sydney Shaw earlier in the film, you had, if you had dropped hints to Sydney Shaw throughout, built like it up as on something. the bottom of a coffee mug or yeah. pinned up on a wall, exactly. something just, just yeah, on a sake of argument. in the background. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you had just just mention Sydney Shaw a couple of times throughout the movie, that's all it needed. But this is this. It's the. I mean, the the movie isn't making me angry as such. It's just making me. It's not making you confused. It's it, yeah. It's not Keith Lemon or Doom. I'm not fucking. <laughs> I'm not angry with it. I'm just. I'm just puzzled. But having those <laughs> having those flashbacks of when Archie sees the the letters with Sydney's name on on them on Lenny's desk. If we'd actually seen that within the film, yes, we, we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have immediately thought, oh, they're one and the same. We would have thought, oh, Lenny knows who he is. Yeah. There'll, there'll be something later on where they meet each other or yeah, whatever. You put that, you yeah. put that flashback. Who's Sydney Shaw? Lane? Oh, don't you fucking worry about it. You put that yeah. at the top of the film. Yeah, you do. You, you put all this set up at the top of the film, which is not there. Yeah. It's it's oh, elsewhere. I'll tell you it's, what it's is there. So, fucking so house pleasant. renovation, the film. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beginning of the 60 film. 60-minute makeover. <laughs> I was puzzled. I was confused. But I was for at least half of the movie compelled. So the the movie does effectively end here. The uh, <laughs> uh well <laughs> the wild things get away. The wild things get let let go. What what else have you got to this? The ending. Yeah, so so the end so, it for me. So the wild things get let go. Um Tony Campbell gets shot in the stomach. Yep. He then has a cool scene and shoots his way out with the help of the producers. Mm, cool. It is a he has cool a scene. Scene, scene happens, uh, and then you know um, the Brady Bunch help him out at the end as well after he's shot, and they all escape. And Lenny dies by getting drowned in the crayfish. Yes, <laughs> drowned in Cape crayfish. And drowned in crayfish. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then what happens? What is the what is the epilogue? The okay, so oh, and. Fanny Newton disappears as well. Yeah, I know! She just disappears. <laughs> I forgot about her. We don't find out because the movie, because Tandy Newton just disappears halfway through the movie and she the movie doesn't dead. care enough. The to look tell on us. Roman Abramovich, not him, because he's a real person. <laughs> on, on, I'm not Roman on, Abramovich's face. 
A look on the man, the Russian man who lives in Wembley Stadium for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> on his face says, oh, I've got a killer, killer girl now. So, but yeah, I mean, yes, you're right. In all likelihood, she's probably dead. But why doesn't the movie care enough to, show to actually, like, put a full stop on that? Probably forgot to film it. <laughs> well, like, why, actually, why, why doesn't one two give a fuck? Right. Epilogue. Epilogue. Let's do what epilogue. happens in the epilogue. Right. So I, I've I've Fucking kind of hell. kind of forgotten most of this epilogue. But isn't it just um, Toby Kibble's character comes out of rehab? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Right. Toby Kibble's character gets shot in the stomach, survives, goes to rehab, gets clean, comes out of rehab, and Arch Archie's there. Archie's there waiting for him. He's like, "Oh, hello, Uncle Arch." And Archie gives him the painting. And he's like, oh, what are you going to do now, Johnny? And Johnny Quid says, I'm going to be like you, Uncle. I'm going to be a real rock and roller. And then there is an end card that says <laughs> Johnny, uh, Archie and the Munch Bunch will be back <laughs> in the real rock and roller. And that is the first in incident on this show where we've had an end card like that <laughs> the, the like a fuck like a full on James Bond will return mm. in it's like oh my the fucking hell guy Richie did you really think well, like the stu like the studio the, they they would have had test screenings they they, they really the, the test screenings really go well enough that the studio studio looked at that movie and went we'll keep the end card it's definitely going to be a sequel, <laughs> right? Ain't it? Like the the oh Jesus Christ! Who? Oh God! Why? It's like just, so fucking cocksure. Just surely, if you've simple. got something like that, you've got to go to Guy, Guy Ritchie and say, if you want that end card, you have to sign something that says, regardless of how this film does, you have to find the money for the second film. Yeah, you have to produce it. Like you just or easier option is just don't put the end cards. <laughs> <laughs> All it is is an end card. <laughs> it's a it's a graphic. You can just snip that out and go straight to the credits. I, no I, one says guy. No one told Guy Ritchie to have that end card there, except Guy Ritchie. Right. I promise you, this isn't a this isn't a full star. We're not watching this just because of the end card. The real okay. rock and roller. I promise you. Right. <laughs> they will return. They fucking won't. <laughs> So, in summary, you loved it? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was all right. I ain't going to watch it again in Ari. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, as you guys can probably guess, it got a mixed reception. No, 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 because the movie isn't finished. Oh, you want to... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you want to talk about the post credit scene? There's nothing. There is Salsa. a post credit scene that shows the Bob and One-Two dance in full. I learned how to do the Bob and One Two dance. Pretty nifty at it. <laughs> I swear it's a boxing maneuver. I am so annoyed that they f they feel the need to show this scene in full. That, that <laughs> this that this be the last thing we take away from the movie is that <laughs> aren't gays funny? Do you want to know something? I once the title once the title that's once the um the end card of they'll return uh, popped up. I went. Right, that's it. Movie's over. Yeah. I did not think they had the fucking audacity to put a post-credit scene in this movie. I was wrong. Oh god, but damn! <laughs> like I, I thought, oh Bob, Bob and One Two. Maybe we are going to get like a reveal that something more happened. Maybe they had a big long smooch. Nope, they just dance. That is what all the gay Hold panic in this movie tender. was about. Hold me true. Awful. Also, fucking awful. After he had his thing with Bob, he talks to Thingy Newton, Randy Newman. Thanos Newton. Randy Newman. <laughs> um, and says, no, maybe you can teach me right how to salsa. Fight. So he got something out of it in the end. He had a good time well, with Bob. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Right. So clearly, as you may have been able to tell, he got a mixed reception. Uh, no. Sits around 59% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Which is like 1% below being fresh right yeah it's right on the cusp i would put it way further down the yeah. chain uh metacritic uh, the aggregate was about 53 out of 100 for it uh most of most um reviewers and critics uh they agreed the themes of the movie are unoriginal pretty standard and mm -hmm. kind of boring yeah it's long good friday 
But the performances oh, no, no, are no, no, strong. No. It's what it's trying to be. Oh, oh, Jesus. But a lot of them did agree the performances are strong, particularly stuff like um, uh, Tom Hardy, Idris Elba, and Toby Kibble, stuff like that. Those performances yeah. were strong. Uh, apparently this movie also, it's Christopher Nolan saw it and it's what inspired him to cast <laughs> uh, Thingy in Inception. Uh, Tom Hardy. He was, he was all right in Inception. I, like oh, I thought he, he was, was going to. I genuinely thought you was going to say this. This is what made Christopher Nolan cast Tom Hardy as Bane. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this basically made I him go. Oh yeah, see he's, why he basically just. He I want you, went, oh, Batman. Really good. I in Inception. <laughs> I've always wanted you, Batman. Uh, like, <laughs> like I, 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 for the most part, I, I, out of all his, all the films he's made, I think I like. Not the hefty majority, but the majority of Guy Ritchie's movies. Like, if he's made ten movies, I like six of them. Yeah, you know. But this, this—he's a good director. This, but this came, was a bad, a bad spot for yeah, his. This came career. at the end of a pretty problematic filmmaking period for Guy Ritchie. I would call this his uh, the M Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan equip. Oh fucking hell, words. The M, M. Night, Night Shyamalan Malayalan. On the, on the M Night scale, where is this? On the M twenty five. Devil. What? Yeah. Devil was. What it was bad? What devil is watchable. way worse than this? I said, I'd put it on equal footing. The toast. The <laughs> toast always lands jelly side down. When the devil is near. The devil is near. No, and anyway, M Night didn't direct Devil. Um, I'm pretty sure. No, I, no, I think he was. Either. I think he just produced it. Just produced. Okay. On the let's M. Put it, let's put it on signs then. On the M Night scale, it's signs. How about that? No, I think signs is better. I don't think so. Oh, it is Fred of Water. On the Give M this kid Night Asper. scale, this is the visit. No, the village. Sorry, the village. I said I thought village was alright. That village was bad. That I think. But although I've seen Devil once, why are we and I rating like movies on an M Night scale now? When did this happen? <laughs> let's let's move on, Dan. Let's we've had a little bit of fun. A little bit of fun. Let's move on to reviews now. So there weren't many great reviews out there, but I I, I found a few that when I mean, you might garner a chuckle, I might keep them. I might not. You reckon? Because this is rated four point four out of five stars on Amazon. <laughs> it is indeed. There's a lot of reviews for this on Amazon. I will tell you that much. Right. So this is by J D Chulet. Okay. Okay. Says it wasn't the greatest 115 minute region t- region B slash two DVD, <laughs> but not that bad. The storyline was okay, but there was a fair bit of violence and bad language that may offend some people. Why do Three I stars. Need, why do I need to know what region his DVD is? <laughs> you tell me. This is from Boondock Saint. <laughs> this is a smiley face. There's no school like the old school, and I'm the headmaster. Some great characters and great lines and a good English cast. Sorry, he's called the Boondock Saint. The Boondock Saint. And he's pro-English. He's, he's all for the good English cast. Oh, okay. Um, With um, Ludacris and all the Americans. Right, I, I have... This is the last one I'll give you. Come on then. Okay. Um, Whoa, Go. that's like a real name. It's like a real name. <laughs> Bleep that out. Okay. Neiman Staramore. All right, then. Um, Guy Ritchie has indeed made a few movies. I don't care if some people don't like this one, but for me, it works on many levels. I'm a bloke, and I like bloke movies. Blokes in, <laughs> blokes in inverted commas. Um, it has a dose of violence, sex, bad language, hot toy, guns, London villains, Russian gangsters, homosexuals, and a plot which twists and turns its way to until the end. Five stars. Hey. Uh. There's some glorious Amazon reviews there. Sex, for you. guns, violence, hot totties, and homosexuals. Day out in London. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to hear about the full start and the reason I made you watch this? Tell me. Because you're why a is sick why is this movie that sets itself up for a sequel so brazenly a full start? So why is this movie? So why is this movie indeed? Newton revealed in an interview. Newton. That... Who is Newton? Randy Newman. Ah, right, thank you. Thanks, Newton. Uh, that Richie had intended to make it a trilogy if it receives enough positive attention. So obviously we can even see that you've got the end title card of Johnny, Archie and the Wild Bunch will be back. Rock and roll thingy, right? Uh-huh. So according to both the commentary and the interview of Richie, 
the second film has been written and is awaiting approval. Right? This is when the DVD came out. So, further on, in 2011, uh, during an interview for Sherlock Holmes 2, mm. uh, Richie said, you know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about it. I've written a script. I think it's a great script. Joel Silver wants to pay me, wants to pay for me to do it. But up until now, we haven't had the time to do it. It's sitting there and we'd all like to do it. It's just a question of when we're going to fit it in. So we'll wait and see. He also said if they kept throwing big movies at him, such as um, Sherlock Holmes and I think Man from Man Uncle. Man from Uncle and King Arthur. And which, King Arthur. Look out for that on this podcast soon. <laughs> uh, and then, the Man from Uncle. <laughs> then it may not happen soon. Yeah. So apparently it's written. It's sitting there. Apart from that, I reached out to Guy Ritchie on Twitter. Saw. Yes, you did. For information. And, and I got nothing back. Because Aww. talking of Man and the man from uncle that was the last time he tweeted back in 2015 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's uh that's the information i have for you honestly. so there is a script there's just a, sitting there's a on script Guy Ritchie's table gathering dust yeah and he won't tell anyone what it is right so sequel pictures shall we shall we we sell we sell let's we sell let's Let's do this. Tommy, Tommy, we sell. Tommy, we sell. Ash, we? <laughs> Would you go first, please? Right, so. Uh, right, it's. Mine is a sequel and a prequel all rolled in one. I've got two timelines running coherently. Oh, dear. Oh, my. And it's going to be fucking good. So the two timelines are we've got Johnny taking his place as crime boss. So he is now king of Land and Tan. Right. And. <laughs> The other one is the back in time, the prequel, the forming of the Wild Bunch. So how they got together and their stupid names. Was it, was it a rat in the sewer picked them up and named them after Renaissance painters? Listen to the script. <laughs> so they're all eating pizza, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, so we, we follow Mumbles as our main character from the little prequel era. Yeah. And because Guy Ritchie don't know anything about accents, um, Mumbles, played by Idris Elba, uh, has come down from Paisley to London. He's lived all his life in Paisley. And he's <laughs> he's got a friend in London called Handsome Bob who's got a job for him. On the train, he meets a nice lad from Hackney. His name's One Two. He's played by Gerard Butler, who's lived in Hackney all his life. And he asks him, Mumbles asks One Two, how did you get that name? And so one two goes into a ten minute monologue of that time in school when he did maths once, and he managed to count to three, and that made him the smartest kid in school. They wanted to call him three, but they couldn't count that high, and so settled on one two. Idris Elba says something in reply, but we don't actually catch what it is for like five <laughs> minutes. Um, so he's trying what? to make he's trying to make himself heard to Gerard Butler. And Gerald Butler just says, fuck it, I'm going to name you Mumbles. <laughs> Present day, Johnny I'm gives... I'm going to name you. <laughs> I'm going to name you Mumbles. <laughs> Mumbly Joe. <laughs> Present day, Johnny gives a 24-minute and 33-second monologue about how he's found <laughs> fucking Nirvana and the meaning of life, and he wants the Wild Bunch to collect it for him. Back to the past. The boys have got a job sticking off a factory where there's a safe with three million quid in it. Present day... The handover went wrong. Turns out the bloke who had the Nirvana didn't want to lose it for some reason. He put up a fight and now they're tearing after him. Back to the past. The boys are breaking down breaking down doors and throwing their weight around trying to locate this safe. Back to present day. They've lost the Nirvana man. He's got away. <laughs> they head back to their hideout when Johnny bursts in and demands to know where his damn Nirvana is. One, two, steps back and stumbles over something. It's a little black briefcase. Suddenly, Johnny grins and asks him to hand it over. One two looks at Handsome Bob and kind of says, You kept it? Handsome Bob just gives a sheepish shrug. Elated, Johnny opens the briefcase and is immediately illuminated by a golden glow. Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> then the finale. 52-minute monologue about how this is the meaning of life <laughs> and how everyone else is a thick dum-dum. <laughs> At some point during his monologue, it turns into narration, and we see the younger Wild Bunch. They've found the safe, and they're cracking it open. And inside, all they find is this same briefcase. 
They open it up and they too get bathed in golden light and we get an over-the-shoulder shot of what's inside the briefcase. It's inlaid in a cheap gold foil and sitting in it is a circuit board with a battery and a shitty light bulb. Johnny's narration comes to an end and staring into the briefcase, all the wild bunch collectively say, fuck, (laughs) the end. Actually, that's beautiful, actually. Yeah, I'm going to take... I want to take a wild swing. A wild bunch. I, I think that your problems with Rock and Roller, the first one, might have been the monologues. Ah, uh, yeah. Think you had some issues with the monologues. I think so. The 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 knockoffs. A little bit. And and the weird plotting. The weird plotting, the character names, the way people just turn up at places. It's just it's just <laughs> a feeling that I've got. Did you also perhaps have a problem with it being Tarantino-esque? I don't know what makes you think of that, mate. Listeners. Let's think about a briefcase. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. It's fucking gerbil having a mad off. I'll tell you. I'll tell you if you can. Because these mics only pick up here. Okay. If for whatever reason Dan is wrong and you can hear that, it's just a hamster being a dick. (laughs) He fucking loves that wheel. So what's the name of your, your movie? Oh, yeah, shit. Uh, <laughs> wait, okay. I want to put a caveat in here. Yeah. None of us are allowed to call it the real rock and roller. Okay. 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 <laughs> Is that because you've already picked that? No, it's because that's what the movie said the sequel would be called. And it would be real difficult to do a Twitter poll if everyone called it the real rock and roller. <laughs> it'd be fucking funny, though. I'm going to call it rock and roller here and then. Rock and roll in here and there. <laughs> yeah, that's shit enough. There and back again. <laughs> I'd call you fucking mumbled. <laughs> I'm going to call you nice mumbled and God, like God, he's God, a pet. God. So, thank you, Ash. Thank you for sharing. It was lovely. Uh, no problem. Lewis. Yo. Give me your pitch, please. Okay. Right, so we have to, we have to keep Johnny, obviously, because he is the made-up phrase rock and roller. He's the, he's the reason the movie's called what it is for some reason. So my sequel opens in rock and roller tradition with a huge plot dump up top. <laughs> uh, we get VO from Johnny that reveals that Johnny didn't trust his junkie mate and swapped the painting for a fake and that the painting that one two gives the accountant that she was killed over is a fake. The Russian, Archie broke his arms over a fake and gifted that fake back to Johnny at the end of the movie. The real painting, Johnny had locked away in a storage container. Big, big old plot dump right up top. The movie starts proper, with Johnny heading to the storage unit to pick up the painting and finding that because he was in rehab so long with no access to his money and whatnot, that his storage locker was sold off to the highest bidder on a Storage Wars-style TV show. An old... Rocker style looking dude with wrinkly skin and sunglasses, leather jacket, dyed black hair. He bought it. So Johnny enlists the Wild Bunts to track this character down and buy the painting off of him. Hmm. He'll reimburse them their money. And it's fine. So the Wild Bunch find the guy and they buy it off of him using counterfeit money. Back at the bar, the Wild Bunch are having a drink. And the, the Storage Wars style TV show is on TV and one two's like, hey, turn it up. We just made this bell and look at eight mug. And they turn and it's it's this guy's backstory. And he's like, oh, I was an enforcer for the craze back in the day. I did my time. Now I'm on the straight and I like to buy storage containers. <laughs> <laughs> Love this up. Wild Bunch think he's a lying prick, but Super Hands has gone all pale. And, what, and he tells them that they've just knocked over Roman Wyatt. He's a proper bad geezer. Superhands leaves before things kick off. He doesn't want to be associated with the Wild Bunch for a while. And then we cut to Russia, where a one-armed, one-legged Russian man (laughs) hops down the hall of his large mansion, opens a door to reveal a prison room of sorts, and in that prison is a tortured, imprisoned, like, disheveled-looking Thanos Newton. (laughs) It's a twist! She's not dead! Even though Johnny's VO said at the beginning that she was dead, how would he or anyone else know? We've got an unreliable narrator. So in a Russian accent, he's like, 
How did you sleep, darling? Oh, your wedding ring has fallen off of your finger again because you wanted to marry her in the first one, remember? <laughs> and he forcibly puts a ring back on her finger and he's like, you cost me 14 million euros and my lucky painting. Now tell me who took my money. <laughs> <laughs> Schwarzenegger as it goes back in London Roman Wyatt the storage wars gangster dude and a couple of heavies they go to see Archie who is the head of the crime family now and using more on PC terms Roman Roman Wyatt is like tells Archie that a black man a Scottish man and a homosexual bought a painting off of me using fake bills <laughs> oh, God. Tank reckons the bills are yours and that you know where to find them so, yes, Archie does know where to find him. He tells him where to find the wild bunch and Roman and the heavies shoot him in the throat and all the guards that were with him solidifying Roman Wyatt as a proper bad geezer. Back at the bar, the Russians show up with Tandy Newton and some goons in tow. And there's a whole standoff with the wild bunch and a big old shootout happens and the Russian goons die and Idris Elba dies and one two gets hit in the thigh and uh, the Russian grabs the accountant and limps outside, dragging her along, berating her about his painting. And he bumps into Roman Wyatt and he's like, you all right, love? And Roman's like, and the Rus Russian guy is like, this is my wife. Do not speak to her. And Roman is like, that's no way to treat a woman. And he punches the Russian out. And he says to Tandy Newton, he's like, did I hear you talking about a painting? Tandy Newton leaves. Roman White goes inside the bar, finds a bloodbath, and one, two, with a great big hole in his leg and poking at the wound, I, I, like demanding to know where the painting is, and so one, two, doesn't tell him, so he shoots Bob. One, two, gives in. He's like, oh, Bob, you was my best friend, <laughs> even though we never really did much, and Idris Elba thought he was my best friend. And he <laughs> leads them to Johnny's mansion in the country, and they all have a sit-down really tense scene where they're just talking like a Tarantino film. And Johnny's like, how much did you pay for that storage locker? 300,000 pounds. How did you know it was a real whistler? When I was in rehab, I had a lot of time to clear my head. Dad, my stepdad never loved me. When he died, he was never going to leave me nothing except his contacts. And we flash back to Johnny's time in rehab when he uses his counsellor and the counsellor's contacts to make the stepdad stepdad's will vanish and have a new one forged leaving everything to johnny but he knew that archie isn't going to be happy about that when he found out so he knew it'd be a fake so he had another set of documents forged leaving it all to archie it turns out my stepdad had his dirty fingers in all sorts of pies including the storage locker business as soon as i found that out i got super hands to go and swap it for another fake i'll be honest with you fellas I've made so many copies of that painting, I've forgotten where the original is. And I can tell you this, because none of us are leaving the room. And Johnny and Roman shoot each other, leaving one, two to bleed out on the sofa. And the final shot is we see Superhands in his tiny little London flat, spark up a cigarette underneath a great big painting hung on, hung on the wall, pride of place. And we never find out what happens to the accountant again. <laughs> that's, well. that's the motif in the rock and roller movies. We don't know what happens to the accountant. Lovely. Thank what's, you. Uh, what's your title? I don't know. Maybe? You got something? No, no, I haven't thought. Well, think of it. Rock and Roller Two, Lewis's yeah. version. Let's let's all pause for a minute while you can you you can use a clause. Let's all let's all pause for a minute. Well, while he thinks of a title. Irish. I've got a title. Yeah. Ask me the question again. Ask me the question again. Yeah. Motherfucker. Cool. Lewis. What's your favourite colour? <laughs> Carlos, what's the title of your movie? Okay, it's called Rock and or Roller. <laughs> Rock and or Roller. Yep. So you had two Tarantino references in there. Yep. One being all sitting around talking. Yep. The other one being a non-PC word for people. Yep. Yeah, I think it's very Tarantino-esque. <laughs> I think you'll find it's very Guy Ritchie has watched a Tarantino movie. And he's doing, trying to imitate that. And he thinks the lady doth protest too much. <laughs> I didn't say <laughs> that, the final, that the final scene of them sitting around all talking was going to be good. True. Because it's not. Right. You also just used the title Rock and Roller. No. I used rock and or Roller. And or Roller. And or Roller. Rock and slash or, or roller. roller. The sort uh, of thing you used to paint your ceiling. <laughs> by Iron Butterfly. So, 
Don't know. Do, do you want to know what his one is, Lewis? Yeah. Yeah? Do you really? Yes. Yeah. I mean... Give us a fair shot, wouldn't it? Nah, I didn't write crazy. a War and Peace for my sequel <laughs> pitch, unlike you two. So... It's difficult to write a rock and roll. You've got so many fucking characters and so, like, a million plots all over the place. Well, perhaps I'll do it better. Maybe. See. We'll see. Maybe so, you'll get the votes because... Like, not everyone will have zoned out. Yeah, <laughs> people picks. just go, oh, this one sounds smaller than me. This one's shorter. <laughs> <laughs> so, my pick. So, my pitch. So, many years in the future. Fuck it, we'll sell it in modern times. Why not? Right. Uh, many jo- years in the future. The year <laughs> Ten is <years>. 2142. <laughs> <laughs> I was very tempted. Very tempted. No. Uh, so Johnny John- is flying around on his rocket boots. I am Cyber Johnny. King of London. Are you children quite finished? <laughs> Story time. Johnny X. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a bad movie. Don't watch that movie. I know. I watched it. So, I owned it. Johnny and the Wild Bunch are in the Middle Ages by this point. Um, their life of crime has dwindled. <laughs> We're back in the 1300s. <laughs> We've gone to the future, now we're in the past, the middle ages. Shut the fuck up, I don't interrupt you. Oh, come you on, talk with your on. stupid bollocks. Yeah, start again, we'll let you, we'll let you start. <laughs> no, no, we're carrying on. Uh, so, they're middle aged by this point, and their life of crime has dwindled. Uh, they basically can't hold stable jobs, you know, they're, they're pretty much left behind by the crime, the crime of the times. No one gives two fucks about them anymore. They're worthless, they're out of time, no one cares. So, they're feeling, you know, Quite left behind, a bit, bit useless, bit useless, bit you know, wasting the money. I was like, well, fuck. What do we do now with ourselves? We've nothing to do. So they all decide, fuck it. We're going to pull off one more job, right? And they go to Johnny Quid, say, look, we need, well, we want to do one big, one big score, one, you know, one big robbery, get some money that we can, you know, retire happy on because we're pretty much fucking dirt poor going job to job. And he goes, and Johnny goes, okay. There might be something, but you've got to, you know, help me out in this. I want to cut of it too. So they decide to go for a bank robbery. And basically, we're just going to do the... We're going to borrow from real life here. And we're going to do the Hat and Garden robbery. Okay. So we're going to have that, and we'll, we'll get to see, you know, see them set up for it, get the materials, you know. We'll, we'll lean heavier towards comedy mm. in this than gangster. And we'll see, you know... Well, hell, we'll even have, we'll have them having to get away from the law, and whatnot. Yep. Anyway, the whole most of the movie is going to be robbery, getting in and out, comedy about that, and then oh shit, they you know they're tracking it back to us. Shit, we're going to go to jail. Damn mm. it. So we'll have them framing a bunch of other random people to go down for the job. At the end of the movie, it's just going to be them retiring on their money and living happily ever after. Okay. Do these random people also have stupid names? They will also have stupid names. Which are? Three, four, <laughs> talks a lot, and disgusting Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, think I know disgusting Phil. <laughs> What's and your movie called? David Scent as well. The movie is called Rock, Rock and Rollering Around the Clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How many clocks are right. in your film? <laughs> I, I think... I think that Dan should be disqualified. Why? Because the the conceit of the sequel pitches is that they are in tone and in universe with the first movie, and your pitch is coherent and has an A to B. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm sorry, you lose. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if I can write better than that movie can. Oh dearie me! Well, that was quite the journey. Hmm. Yes. As a Guy Ritchie character would say, it's been emotional. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you guys for next month. I believe it is your pick next, isn't it, Ash? It is mine. What is your pick? My pick for next month is Super Mario Bros. Why? Why? Thank you for watching a film. <laughs> but why? Uh, because it had to happen eventually. But well, is this because I made you watch Keith Lemon? No, okay. it's because it's well, number one, I saw it as a kid and I liked it, and I know if I watch it now, I'm going to hate it. So we'll all share in the misery. Okay. But number two, watching shit films is good for our algorithms. 
It was very good for the so, algorithms. So, yeah. I know Al Gore did rhythms. Didn't know he was a drummer. Oh, but, mate, but, he's so tight. The way he gets the snare and the hi-hat is beautiful. What is <laughs> your modern movie? I'm not going to say yet because I've not looked into it. Hey, <laughs> awesome. It doesn't matter anyway because whatever we pick. It ain't going to be there. The movie, they'll just have a problem with the screen and we'll have to see something else. <laughs> okay, guys. So thank you very much for listening. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter and uh, Reddit. Also at Full Starts Podcast. Yeah, you can fight. You can interact. You can fight us. us. Interact you can us. interact with us. On Facebook and Twitter at Full Starts Pod, or you can email us at full, st- full Starts Pod at gmail.com. You can listen to us. Uh, we're on iTunes, we're on SoundCloud, we're on Podomatic, we're on Stitcher now, I think. We are now on Stitcher. We're now on Stitcher. Uh, I, I think we haven't loaded up. Well, we're going to be on YouTube. We are on YouTube. Our, if you want to go back and listen, start listening from the beginning, the old episodes, we are on YouTube. The first episode is up there now with, as promised, extra dank memes. <laughs> it's so uncool. <laughs> so <laughs> uncool. Uh, you can also find us individually at... Uh, oh, shit. What's my Twitter handle? Ty's, Ty's Beanie, Beanie Babies. Babies. Ash underscore Bronzebeard. And at Dan underscore Bookie. So until next month, guys. But mainly, mainly at Full Starts Pod. That's so, where we want to interact with you. Tara from Teeny Tot and Tiny. <laughs> la, 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 we have da, been the da, Tots da. of Tots TV. <laughs> Bye, one. No one else is going to do two, three? Two. Thank you. One, two. Oh. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Ruin everything.